Okay, okay. Ugh. Howdy, fellas. How's it going? Uh, <laughs> I accidentally took a weekend off, uh, unintentionally, because my body just said both days, nah, <laughs> you ain't doing it today. I think, uh, what was it, Saturday, I just, I think I passed out most of the day, and when I woke up, it was already about time to stream, and I'm like, I need to eat something. <laughs> I, I haven't eaten anything. It's already late. No stream. And then Sunday, yeah, Sunday, I was, I think I was passed out, like, around stream time, and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, I need some actual, I, because my sleep schedule's uh, kind of fucked right now. Not great, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. But today, hey, we're here. We're going to be reading. Very fun. It's, uh, oh boy. Did a quick poll and everything, and people seem to want to continue this, so that's what we're doing tonight. Schnoot, there he is. Weak mindset. Visit an arcade. Wish I visited an arcade. Yeah, my sleep is beyond fucked as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of on, uh, I mean, I've mentioned it before, my sleep schedule kind of pivots between, uh, or, not pivots, but pendulums between perfectly normal falling asleep around, like, 11 p.m. and then waking up at, like, a decent time, to, okay, now flip-flop the p.m.s and a.m.s. Now I'm sleeping during the day. It's rough. And uh, I'm I'm on the I'm on the the fucked side of things right now. Eventually I'll swing back around, but for right now I gotta fucking figure this out. So, yeah. Oh boy, I haven't drank much today, so I got a nice cold crisp Wawa right here. Take a weekend off. I worked an overtime weekend, good eight hour and nine and a half hours Saturday and Sunday. Rip. Big rip. Hopefully you got paid more for it at least. That's rough, buddy. I do this to myself, so like I can't even ask for pity, you know what I mean? <laughs> like if I just actually committed to it, I'd be fine. But uh, you know, sometimes sometimes you gotta do what was it, a twelve and a half hour fucking dragon's dogma stream because hey, Tony and Nugget want to have some fun, right? I might like all the way down here, by the way. Should be up here. I think it was uh, trying to get the sizing on the zoom, right? Because I couldn't remember what I had last time. I had a day where I slept at 10 a.m. and woke up at 3 p.m. Fell asleep again and finally woke up two hours past midnight. I wish, I wish we as humans had more liberty to do that without consequences, you know? I feel like everybody can use a couple of those days every now and again and just be like, hey, alright, look, <laughs> it happened, we'll get back to normal eventually, but you gotta be understanding right now. I think finishing Broken Wings first before doing another, uh, different fix is good. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we don't have, uh, what was it? an hour long tangent again this time hopefully we can get a bit more done not that i'm not open to it but <laughs> it's uh if we keep going at the rate we're going five chapters a stream then we're gonna be having it's gonna take us a month to get through one fic so you know how it is that or i'll need to uh i don't know figure out a way to read faster without sounding like i'm going super fast Getting my uh, time one or two working in a fab shop gets its perks. Nugget would be disappointed in you. You're right, Nugget would be disappointed in me. But then again, Nugget would probably make some some fucking side comment about me having a sausage party of a team because I just got a new pawn and they were better than my last one and they just so happened to be a male again. Yeah, we start with the hour-long tangent this time, so it won't interrupt us in the middle. Yeah, get it out of the way. Get it all out of the way now. Get all the way out of your system. Flush it out right now, and then we can we can be read boys for the rest of this fucking stream. <laughs> you are reading fast enough. Yeah, I mean, like, that, that's the thing, right? Like, I, 
I, I said that like maybe I could read faster. It wouldn't. There there isn't like a good way to really do that faster. I just have to actually kind of limit myself in those in between those chapters. <laughs> Don't worry. It won't be an hour. It'll be two hours instead. We would never be finishing this fucking fic. Sad part is being in a shop with only four other co-workers. So crunch time is going to crunch. Oof. Oof. Hopefully it doesn't get too, too bad. <coughs> Ugh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys. Uh, it's, I, I told you that I, I'm on the fuck schedule right now. Uh, I kind of woke up like... Twenty minutes ago, <laughs> from like a four-hour nap, and I was like, "Okay, I can do this. Get up, get up, you fucking clown! You have a, you have a performance. Put on my makeup, got my little clown nose on. Now we're here. It was just that tangent. Be two chapters and in intermission with chat." Uh, we'll, we'll still do intermission with chat after every chapter, but if it seems like we're taking, uh, longer intermissions, like, consistently, then maybe we'll, uh, skew it towards two chapters and then an intermission. Just cause, just so that way we can, you know, air out any, like, thoughts about, uh, any particular chapter. Cause, like, what if something crazy happens in one chapter? And it's like, okay, well, obviously we want to talk about this, but <laughs> we're doing another chapter. Then again, I'm also the conductor of this chain, so I could just make the call then. We'll see. We'll see how things feel. Nugget can't read. No, no, Nugget can read because he's always saying, I'll be walking through a place and he'll be like, let's have a look at this then. And it's, he just marks like a fucking note on the wall. I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck what that says. <laughs> I'm the Arisen. I need to go like beat a dragon up. Story's also the shortest from the ones you list in the community post. Yeah, it kind of is, isn't it? Yeah. By the way, uh, from that community post, uh, obviously I'll still be using some of the information there for like what we're going to take a look at after this. There'll be another community post regarding what we, uh, what we start after this uh, once we get to finishing this, but... Kind of gives me an idea of where people are maybe looking and whatnot. Also, there was a couple of fix recommended. Um, I think there was one that was, uh, someone said it was pretty good, but it's still in progress. So we can keep tabs on ones that are still having stuff written. You'll have an hour long tangent every chapter, just wait. Does that mean I made it as a just chatting streamer? Does that, does that mean we, 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 we made it, boys? <laughs> I can keep that going as long as I need to. I edge to your fang voice. <clears throat> Damn. Okay. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> hey, I mean... Whatever helps you, buddy, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't... I don't see it personally, but I guess it's that whole eye... Beauty in the eye of the beholder. Uh, except it's... Uh, Edging to the something. I don't know. I was trying to think of something clever there. I'm calling the police. I don't have the handcuffs on me today. Someone else has to be cop. I, I can't be busting people for. Well, I guess I am, but. All right, you know what? No, I'm not going to continue that. Tangent. Um, Too bad we don't have Fang just show up and say, get in, get with it, dweeb. So after you finish this one, going to do another fic? Uh, I mean, that's like there's a. Pretty decent chance, unless people want to, like, have something else read. Um, figure, like I said before, a lot of people came from Snoot Game or Wani, so... The community probably is down with, uh, these types of fix, but if there's, uh, enough demand for something else, we can always... Take a look. Given enough time, Monday streams will evolve into Undertale AU comics. Only the good ones, though. <laughs> Only the good ones. Now, if you ask me which one of the good ones, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't go that deep into that side of things. I kind of like, once the Undertale fandom just like started doing the Sans lightsaber cocks, I was like, okay, I'm just going to wait until somebody else passes, like slips me something across the table and I'm just going to stay over my corner over here. To the ones you had in the community post were also in progress too. Mm-hmm. 
more time for them. And then the chamber reprimed is still ongoing, but so long we won't have to worry about that. I guess that's also true. Like with the rate we go through these, even if we start one, we it would be a while before we get to the end of wherever it's at currently. I mean, even if you would start an unfinished for the considering your reason, but yeah. Funny thing is the longest one from the post is currently more than three times longer than this one. You know, I... I said it before, but these, some of these motherfuckers are out here, you know, just doing God's work, just act, nose to the grindstone, and like they're they're so real for that. I it probably couldn't be me, but you know, I give them a quick salute. Bust me, go to horny jail. Okay, calling E one Fang on Hermit Crab. We're putting out a hit. We're gonna click clack. We're gonna click clack, baby Hermit Crab. Sands light what now? Oh. <laughs> oh, Vice, you don't know. <laughs> there was a dark moment in history where people decided that they wanted to draw... Well, I mean... I'm sure some people are still out there doing their feral shit, but they wanted to fuck Sans. Um, the thing is, he's a... He's a skeleton. Uh, so... You know. Not sure how that really supposed to work. But then some genius decided, wait... We're going to give him an ectoplasm dick. And it's going to glow. <laughs> Ergo, it's a lightsaber cock. <laughs> so that, um, that happened. And, uh, people seem to latch onto that idea. If you want to be broken further before feeling the healing, bad apple. If you want to feel the heals with some turbulence, bonds. With handcuffs, fucking so dude, who, who out there decided that they were going to make like a tongue out sweating emoji? Like that person needs to be, that person needs to be interrogated for what they've done, because I have never seen that in a context other than somebody being the thirstiest motherfucker and just saying something down horrendous. You know what I mean? Personal recommendation, still reading the fix. See, that's a cool thing, too, about the speed we're going at. By the time we finish, other people have, like, vetted other fix and be like, yeah, I got an idea of that one. Here's what you're going to be looking into. So I'm not walking through the dark. I have somebody holding my hand. And I'll be like, yes, lead me my Sherpa. Point me to the good stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the Snooters serious novel level stories here. Yeah, they do not surprise me at all, though. I mean... People can get real passionate about a game, and like when a game is a VN, I feel like it's much easier to kind of build off of that story because people are like, well, this is basically just like a fucking, vi uh, not, it is a visual novel. This is basically like a fic anyway, so I'll just extend off it. Easy peasy. Not to mention it's like a straightforward story, you know, other than like the multiple endings. It's not like... Because I'm thinking right now, like, okay, what if somebody wanted to write, like, a fucking Dragon's Dogma story, you know what I mean? There's so much shit going on there, it's like, where do you even start with that? And that, it would have any, anybody on the, uh, everybody be on the same page, or all that shit. God, what do people want to be boned by Skelebros, not have a wholesome Gator GF? That's what I'm saying. I mean, everybody's got their thing, but, like, come on now. You can canonically snoo snoo the gator GF and Tara wife. When it comes to the fucking funny skeleton, all he does is make jokes and like kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Remember being the tail fan on things I've seen. Checking in, the longest one from the community post is also the most recent starting one. I mean five months ago. God damn. God damn. I mean, I've said it before, I kind of, like, did my own, like, little writing of some fanfic shit relating to Deltarune, I believe. At least I think I've said that. And, like, I've gotten a good chunk written, but that took me the better part of, like, a year? And it's nowhere near as long as anything these people are doing, so they just... They got it going on. Man, it's hot in here. Sweating emoji. Boy, I'm dehydrated. I'd really like a glass of water. Sweating emoji. 
and then and then here it is read read route continuation needed sweating emoji you know we had two where people were actually needing some guagua gua. <laughs> and then one person and then fucking baby hermit crab comes in with his shit again nope doesn't work that's what i'm saying <laughs> it, it's it's a fucking there's there's no way to take it other than like what <laughs> what people use it for you know what i mean that or it's just uh, we're all so far gone at this point. Like maybe like a real like a boomer or something who no, doesn't use the internet would be like, "Oh, look at that! They just need a little bit of water. They need a shippy." But we've seen things. Tony Nugget romance. They would they would they would hold each other gently. They definitely spoon at the ends. This is just in the chamber reprime goes really hard. Yeah, that's why I was on the community post. Because I, I I think, I, I don't know if anybody, or I know, I think you've recommended that, but I think somebody else has also recommended that. Talked about Fang or Olivia, but what about Anon or Inko? I think on surface I'd get along uh, with Inko better, but on a deeper level, Anon. Yeah, I can generally agree with that. I think, like, I think Inko is easier to approach than Anon, but I feel like I'd be able to shoot the shit easy after a little bit with uh, Anon, and then we, we, we'd get on well. Next Snoop mod stream is looking at the route mods. <laughs> yeah, I gotta figure out when I'm gonna do that. Um, I'll probably have to like ask around, see what uh, which ones are worth playing, and which ones uh, I should expect to be like, uh, maybe more shit takes. <laughs> And I only encountered Snoot about 2.5 months after GVH release. Can see how people showing up down the line with new fix and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Like, people trickle in and they're like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Yo, I like this. This is great. Ever feel so alienated by a fandom? Being an Undertale fan back in it in the first three years, leaving, coming back, and remembering why you left? Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, I was there at, like, ground zeros for the most part. Like, I wasn't aware of the Kickstarter regarding Undertale, but I was there within the first month before it, like, hella popped off. So I got to see that thing rise and fall and all the stuff in between. It was a it was a crazy fucking journey, that's for sure. Gator needs water sweating emoji. This has two meanings, it depending on what your brain thinks first. Well, obviously, the brain's not going to think the nice thing first. Well, I guess it depends on what you consider nice. <laughs> Oh shit, hold up a sec. Uh, where is it? Come here, you motherfucker! <laughs> Do not disturb! Throw you into the void! There we go. Normally I would just do like a window capture, but we need the fang. We need, we need our little fang right here. <coughs> oh. I think that was me from the Chamber Brie Prime, unless someone else did. Right, yeah, that, that, that's what I mean. I think, like, it's been recommended a couple times. A enough that, like, I recognize it, you know what I mean? Somebody else recommended it on, I think, Snoot Stream 3. So I went and totally... <laughs> so I went and totally didn't read all 24 chapters in, like, two days. And then I recommended it, too. You totally didn't, of course. You, 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 you wouldn't, right? <laughs> you wouldn't lie on the stream. This is a... This is one of those, uh... In those safe spaces, liars get persecuted. Says the notorious liar himself. <clears throat> that is. Uh, you guys do that too. Like, I'll just be in a call with, like, my buddies. I'll be shooting the shit. And someone will say something that's, like, just, like, that's wrong. That's not right. That's incorrect. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, I'll do it. I'll do it first. And make sure that everybody else knows that I'm like going like I, I'm I'm I have the ball in my hand. They see me lying now, and I wait. They just wait and see me cook, and I just drag that out as long as I can until like there's a point where it's like, nah, I'm fucking with you, and I've gotten pretty good at it. <laughs> read route, read route, read route. At least Snoop Bro community has a line which is, "You must protect their smile." 
Well, we've all seen what happens when we don't. <laughs> we we all know the bad the bad realities, and we can't have that. We we as a collective realize, mm -mm, no no no, don't let that one happen. And if you do let it happen, you are obligated to try and make it better. One hundred percent lie on stream in real life and un even under oath. <laughs> Damn. Not only a casual liar, but we got a professional liar in here, fellas. Under oath? Let's go. Usually wait for fix to be complete before reading. I mean, that's usually a pretty good way to go about it, because you don't want to, like, get super invested in a fic and then be like, well, <laughs> looking around, there's nobody else here. The fic is either, like, just taking forever to update, or hell, sometimes it even got abandoned, and you're sitting there like, oh, wow. <laughs> Great, now I have to use my own imagination. Should arrange a meetup of all the literally Ryan Gosling bros in the Snoot game Reddit and create our own govern utopia. We gotta bring the dinos back, everybody. Supportive gaslighting. Fuck the casual line, I'm going ranked. I like to think of it as just an opportunity to practice my acting. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got I got to I got to really sell it when I'm telling a lie. Get in get into the character. See if it just hasn't been updated for like 2 years then I won't start reading it. There's a certain time frame where it's a little too stale and you're like, "Ugh, I need something a little fresher." With the caveat as long as it's unfinished. Obviously, if it's 2 years ago and it was finished, that's fine. Forgot day four of calling it go dipshit is dipshit. Everyone should get a jeans, should get jeans, a green shirt, and a green jacket with, and just flood a con with Anon cosplays. Would we have to shave our hair? <laughs> I kind of been I I kind of got this hair going on from pre-COVID, and you know it'd be it'd be a damn shame to throw it out now. Just take being one depression and push it somewhere else. Yeah, we don't need that. I don't need that in my heart. School snooter who? I'm sorry. The only person I see right now is my loving wife Fang, or my loving wife Lucy. Have you listened to 1AM Freestyle? It's considered the E1 song for Snoot. I don't think I have. Let's see if I can pull that up real quick. <coughs> oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Let's see. 1AM Freestyle. Oh, is it a uh, Joji? Yeah, I haven't actually heard this. You can play in the background while uh, we're still chatting here. Okay, that should be getting picked up. <clears throat> Shave that hair, coward, bald, it's the future. Man, I don't even know what kind of, like, care you gotta put into having a bald head. Do I need to go get, like, some, some wax and go... Get like one of those colored full body suits, but skin colored. Oh. I mean, it would make it so that you can't see my face, right? And I can't really rip my face off, <laughs> as as much as people might want me to. <laughs> I can't just pave over it. Hey, how's everyone doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Vibe seems pretty good in chat. I think most people are doing pretty good as well. Hopefully you're doing fine. Made it in time. Welcome, welcome. You're 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 here for the pre the pre reading chat currently. You could do any Joji song for E1. I actually haven't listened to like much Joji. I mean, from what I've heard, he's fine. But I don't think it's just like the uh, the type of music I tend to listen to. Then again, the type of music I tend to listen to is just kind of like wherever YouTube mix takes me. Like, I'll click one of those automated playlists and I'll be like, alright, send it. 
will just listen to whatever the fuck you're sending my way. Cause usually I'm playing music in like the background while I'm gaming or something. Miss you playing this new game. We'll be doing like probably some more mods eventually. I just gotta get it set up. <clears throat> and all that good shit. Car buffer for it. Die for you is made for you too. We are at on we are Legion. We all miss playing Snoot game. It's definitely one of those games that you're like, oh man, if I could like wipe my brain and play it again, that'd be cool. And given like what I've seen sometimes on like the fucking Snoot Reddit and everything and people being like Guys, this game has fucking changed my life. It's like, all right, <laughs> yeah, they're probably on the same boat. Just seeing that edit with an animation of Fang smile on the one with this song. That damn smile. Freak on only should work for you, one. So, been playing the little Gator mod for Wami. What the fuck am I playing? Yeah, what is what is that about? Uh, cause I remember seeing like mention of like the little gator mod and then i saw like an image of olivia with like a binky and i was like what <laughs> what's going on over there only has a couple brief mods now i think dub baby gator mod weird but fun shit post mod well hey if they're cooking once once there's a once there's a decent bit out we'll probably uh collect them and do a fucking wani stream with them <laughs> we lost the baby Smile's never broken me so much before. It's that smile that has a lot of pain in it. You can tell it's Jover. There's no, there's nothing else going to happen here. You know damn well that Fang's about to leap through that fence. Olivia becoming a tech priest mod when? Looks around. There's got to be somebody out there who wants to do it right. <laughs> My bikini or not my bikini. Why did I read it? See, that's one of those moments where, um, you know, I think I just, I'm either fucking stupid or I have dyslexia. Cause I like, I read that as just, it, it says my binky, but I said my bikini, which made no sense with the context of everything. But when I read it again, it said, Oh, my binky. I was like, Oh, okay. It was like another one. Like, uh, my buddies shared a post or something from like fucking in our Instagram chat. And it was like, Oh, fuck, let me let me see if I can find it real quick. I mean, it was recent, so it should be near the top. Except this motherfucker has ended up sending 10,000 more things in the course of like two hours. Jesus Christ, where was the post? Alright, I lied. It's gone. Anyways, it was like some dude with like google searches like guys i'm cooking something up just you wait and it's like google searches relating to like beasts and where to find them and what's the biggest beast but like my ass decided to put an r in there for some reason so i read it as like breasts where are the biggest breasts how to hunt breasts and i was like what the fuck <laughs> what is this guy cooking fishing trip took like a year apparently so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie that doesn't really surprise me it's a very high quality mod Last little bit of warmth and love she can muster. What do you mean you lost the baby? Go find him! Get the baby now! You see the baby car like roll by, window down. Let's go! Like, no! Who gave him the keys? Mimi and Miwa mods look interesting. Oh yeah, that's uh... That's another human dino combo, isn't it? Romance the trigger. <clears throat> no, I read bikini a second ago too. My man. Dab me up. <laughs> Dub baby convertible? Question mark? Exclamation mark? Is Mimi and Nawa that six foot eleven mommy fan made game? For gore, but if yes, bus. I don't know if it's like a fan made game or anything, but I know that I've seen like some some artwork and stuff. And I'm like, damn. Let's go. Cook, cook. Ah. 
It's always good when there's like some certified chefs in the fandom. Convertible into what? Hold up. I can grab the baby car. Da baby mobile. The baby car game, huh? The the baby game. What? <laughs> Man, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> what the fuck is this? What is this? Just for fun extension, a thousand users. <laughs> You've got the baby, the baby car, driving up. And I, why did they like, why, why is, why is the baby car search in the background? Khan Academy JavaScript Python. My man was getting ready for this. This took all of his power to put together. <laughs> Let's look at the reviews real quick. My dad caught me playing this game at 3am and he said he would go buy me milk. Gave me an STD. I loved it though. Zero out of 10 would recommend. Worst game I've ever played. Disgusting piece of filth. 10 out of 10. Okay. Okay. Well, there's there's the baby car. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to click on that. I could have just as easily shown an image. But, you know, when I saw the baby car game, I was like, what's that? <laughs> My little brain went, Ooh. let's take a look real quick. I believe it's a good mod for Snoot. Tucks that into my brain manifolds. New account. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the that's what that one the play on words for that one's supposed to be. Continuation. I have stage six brain rods. Trigger waifu that could break your skull with her thighs. Truly appealing to the masses. Me and my brother were actually having that conversation. In the in the car today, because we went to like go pick up some groceries and get some fucking Wendy's. Like on the way back, we were like, "Yeah, I don't get it when people are like, I I couldn't date someone stronger than me. It's like, nah, fuck you, coward. Let them pick me up. Let them hold me gently. Let them also be able to just fucking manhandle me. Because I can get it on the I like I understand the other side of that. Find yourself a small one as well that you can just hold gently yourself and pick up." And just like put on your shoulders and shit. There, there's, there's, there's an appeal to both. Taste both varieties of life if you can. Okay, we need a Wani mod where it's Olivia versus Inko in a match of COD or some FPS game. Inko finally gets score on her, and then Olivia death rolls Inko in the end. Inko locks in for like one second, ignites every brain cell just to throw a gren like a grenade, and it hits Olivia, and Olivia just gets fucking gamer raged out. I said it's the baby convertible. Let's go. Love the type of woman that will actually just kill me. <laughs> I hate that meme so much. It's up there with Thanos truck. Speaking of E2, do you think things would have been better if they went to prom instead of skipping? Or do you think that blow up was inevitable? I think the blow up was inevitable at some point. It would have slipped. If not then, some at some other point. Because it's supposed to be that like that's just like uh, Anon with his unfiltered thoughts and he'd find another situation in which to dump all that I'm pretty sure I think it's like Wani E2 but sped up with alcohol that's a good uh, yeah I think that accurately sums it up <clears throat> man I don't know why but I've had to clear my throat twice already got that phlegm going on and shit Ah, let's see how long we've been going for. About thirty, well, thirty-six minutes. Got water? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I love water. Also, I, I I need to drink some more water. I had to had to go uh, go piss before stream. I was like, hmm, <laughs> I'm a little dehydrated today. We're gonna need to double up on the water bottles, I think, for stream. Cause I've already almost crushed this one, so I'll probably have to go grab another one, maybe in a chapter or two. But, uh, yeah, I guess one of the last things I'll uh, talk about before we get this thing rolling is, um, 
even though I wasn't streaming it, I was continuing to play Dragon's Dogma. A game, uh, game's uh, pretty fun. Although I also have this thing where I can like hyper fixate on something for a while because I have this need to complete. So like while I am enjoying the combat and everything, part of it's also probably like, oh boy, he, he, uh, he just can't stop himself. He can't help himself. He has a problem. And so I currently am in the second zone of the game, picked up trickster and everything, and then, uh, thought I was going to be smart. And I was like, <laughs> oh boy, you know what? I'm like a level five trickster. I can fight that Drake. I could not fight that Drake. <laughs> that Drake was a little too fucking strong. So, um, yeah, after all the pawns got f tossed to hell and back, I was like, all right, time to go. Um, I, I think like, what was I? I think the last time I streamed, I had, uh, fought at best like a chimera. Since then I fought tons of different things. Uh, it, it's been, I've killed multiple drakes. Uh, I think I was spear hand before I ended stream. I don't know how I like, I got to level eight on spear hand, but then I was like, I'm going to try a, a archer for a while. And then I locked in on that and became like max that vocation out. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> if you would ask me at the start here, what vocation was I going to max out first? Archer would not have been my first thought, but here I am being a shoot boy and then yeah now i'm doing trickster i'm probably gonna swap off trickster though it's a little too indirect for my taste it might be fun later on like another playthrough but like the thing is with trickster you're supposed to like just fuck around with like people and like also use like let them walk off cliffs but it's like well i want the loot it's great and all that i could get a cyclops to just bumble his ass right off a cliff and everything but i can't take his shit <laughs> I want that. I like loot. No, GF. Just you're good. Uh, you're just good enough as you are, gym bro. GF. No pain, no gain. We hit the gym. I do need. I, f I just remembered. I actually need to work out today. I try to do workouts on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but like, damn, my ass be slipping up. Bottled water. Are you lucky with a good well? Uh, I'm in the middle of a city, so um, that well shit ain't happening. <laughs> I got that bottled stuff. Good old, good old plastic. My body is uh, ingesting all these microplastics so that eventually I can make a toy. And related saw coming up on a, uh, on reels of a guy asking for a girl in the vid to write her name on his chest with her stomach acid. You know, I like. I was following until that last, those last two words, and then I. Um, yeah, I clocked the fuck out. I yeah, what? Stomach acid? Need something to clear my mind after playing that little gator mod. Glad I caught this stream. <laughs> we'll get to the reading eventually, but right now we're just all over the place. Our relationships with games is like friends. My favorites like Terraria. I can go months without playing, but still one of my favorite when we'll hang out. Oh yeah, I'd love me some Terraria every now and again. Like, some people have like a yearly like go back to Minecraft for a week. I, I have kind of like a yearly go back to Terraria for a week and just jam that shit out. Go play like Calamity or something too and just go hard. Try maybe a build I hadn't done. I almost missed the reading here. Fortunately for you, we got, we're, we're front loading the stream with the chatting. Terraria really good. Talking about how bad Trickster is now. It's actually baffling how bad it is. I need to like experiment around. Like I get the idea of it. I think my issue with Trickster though is that it's just too indirect, right? And here's here's the fucking okay. You want to know something that really pissed me off? Here's one thing that's so stupid. Okay, you get Trickster when you get into um when you when you go to back or when you're heading towards Back Batal, um, and you're gonna want to use Trickster. So you run back to the checkpoint and swap back to Trickster. And then you get to back Batal and you're like, okay, cool. Now I'm going to head into town and, uh, level up with, uh, use my discipline to level up the fucking, the stuff that I unlocked because I've, I've got the vocation up as we were going through and you go into town and then you get jumped by three people and they're like, do a one V three. And you're like, no, I'm a trickster. I don't do damage. I rely on my pawns. And they're like, okay, fine. One V one. And you're like, I do. 
What? There's nowhere to throw. I can't make this man walk off a fucking cliff. What, what am I going to do? Attach my ghost to him and have him be like, huh, guess that's the wind and then crush me with his sword. That was really fucking stupid. <laughs> that was really dumb. I, I it kind of pissed me off a little bit because apparently you can get like an item or something. If you actually win that encounter, I'm like, uh, you doomed me from the start. You played me. This is bullshit. But, I mean, other than that, you rely too heavily on your pawns. Like, even Mage, who's the support class, at least they can do some direct damage. Otherwise, like, with Trickster, you're just, like, hoping to God that there's some kind of environmental hazard that you can use. Which there isn't always. I need to test a little bit more and try out, um, like, the, the buff you can do, which empowers your pawns. Because maybe that helps you just rinse things. But, as it is right now... Trickster's okay for when you're dealing with like low level enemies, but when you have to fight something bigger, it can get really fucking annoying. Looks at the golem, looks at the one fucking thing on its foot that I can't hit because I'm a trickster, and all my guys are just looking around like, what do we do, dad? <laughs> we don't know how to fight this thing. And then I have to walk up and grab its leg and just walk around with it and hopefully trip the motherfucker and then hope that the... Oh my god. Let's just say I'm glad that I got the couple of fucking augments I want off Trickster so I can go play another class. <laughs> <laughs> Think St. Haman from Little Gator would be ones getting the Jonestown special. Yo, are we passing out the juice? Killed multiple drakes, didn't even know that there was more than one. I didn't either. I mean, I thought the Drake was going to be like a, uh, like a, like a super boss or something. And I mean, don't get me wrong. When that motherfucker decides to cast Meteora and then all of a sudden all my pawns are dead. And I'm like, well, shit, <laughs> not great. It's not great. <laughs> Fucking, oh boy. But yeah, I think I've come across. <sighs> shit. I want to say I've killed three Drakes now. And I tried to fight a fourth as the trickster, which didn't work. And I'll have to go back and beat his ass later. But I found a place where you use the uh, Worm's Life crystals to actually, like, super empower your shit. So that's cool. I'm, I'm down with that. Because I've got, like, 60 now. Because you can get usually, like, 20 per dragon. Or not dragon, drake. Sorry. They're, they're not dragons because dragons are way fucking scarier. I think. I'm Not like I fought one. Oh, that sucks. My bathroom dispenses the best friggin' water from the sink. Oh, man. I'm gonna be honest. I couldn't... I don't, I don't know if I would uh, be able to drink sink water. It's got It's got that... It's got that... That schutzpa to it, you know? It's got, a, it's got a little something in there. It's like, ooh, wait a minute. <laughs> my mind doesn't associate water with this taste. This is a little odd. I mean, my brother I know, he doesn't drink bottled water. He just, like, fucking... He's got like a metal water, uh, metal water bottle. He'll just fill up from the fridge, and that's his thing. Which honestly, at some point, I probably should, dude, because like we don't really need all these f bottles of water. Um, but I would do a thing where like I have two, one that I fill up and just put in the fridge, because I, I I like my water nice and cold, nice and crisp. You know, that makes me happy. Week pulls out one gallon metal water bottle. See, that's the thing, right? <laughs> Get, get you like a jerry, like one of those old jerry cans, you know? <laughs> Fill that bitch up and put it in the fridge. Easy peasy. Try different classes, really do, but I can't help myself but play melee. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I've been trying to at least sample around. Like, with the, um... I mean, we started with mage, went to sorcerer, didn't... Like, the thing with source is I didn't get far enough in to, to really feel much of a difference. It kind of just felt like a... Honestly, a bit of a weaker mage, but I'm assuming that the actual spells you get at higher vocation levels in it are pretty good. Um, I haven't played either of the martial classes, which is what, fighter and like marauder or whatever the fuck, uh, or thief. I think thief is probably going to be the next one I take a look at. Then I played spearhand, which I thought slapped pretty, pretty good. I'd probably go back to that currently out of the ones I've played. Uh, Archer... More fun than I would have thought. I don't use like the auto aim though. I I manual, I manually shoot all of that shit because like you pull, you aim, you pull off a headshot and like a little gobino and he just flicks backwards and you're like hell yeah. 
there's also i don't know there's something that speaks to me about using the charge shot on it perfect timing it the world goes monochrome for a second and you go you shoot like a fucking dragon in the head and it goes oh what the fuck dude what did you do that for you piece of shit and then trickster i already ranted about so yeah sword master is a better style than trickster world guard is for chads though yeah, I mean, like, uh, Fighter has, like, all the... Swordmaster has, like, all the uh, the parry shit done it. I do want to try that at some point, because that could be fun. The closest I've gotten so far with, like, having to parry is, um... Spear hand with the, um... The drop attack for the empowered hit, or, like, timing the shield on that, so that way you just negate damage for everybody. Like, there was one time, um... I think it was... I want to say it was an ogre grabbed one of my uh, one of my pawns while I was playing spearhand, and I saw them get grabbed. I waited a second so right before they did the throw that was gonna knock them the fuck out, and then I went shield, no damage to them. I'm like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, man. Guard maxing. Anybody who's fought Drakes so far, have you, uh, have, has they, have they cast that, uh, ability where they just say, uh, your pawn's mine now? Cause that one's a funny one, isn't it? I met the Sphinx today as well. Oh yeah, I did the first part of Sphinx. Um, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I, I, <laughs> I don't got the time to, to take L's. Uh, so I might have, like, uh, referenced some guide for that because, uh, who the fuck is going to go out there and grab the right pawn for fucking for one of those riddles? Hmm, metal and chemical flavor. I'm a dragon, won't tell you how it feels to fight us though. Specifically, I'm Corpo Dragon. Oh, you would have like a fucking horde of wealth, wouldn't you? Water is great if your house is hooked up to one. It's not like city water. Which is basically just purified in a plant. Or well water, not well water. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever had well water, to be honest. Oh. Well, just heard like a car beep outside. I've gone with Magic Archer, Mystic Spear Hand, and Warrior so far. Probably start leveling Thief after. Also found a bow that weighs 15 kilograms, which is insane. Is that like the fucking Dragon Slayer bow from Dark Souls? Holy shit. I need to find Magic Archer still. Might need to run it through the pipes for a while before drinking to get rid of the chemicals used to clean them, though. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, if they do, you gotta make sure they don't have Dragon's Plague afterwards. You know, I, I like, saw mention of Dragon's Plague, and I think I, I, think I heard... The um the pawns uh talking about something where like oh if the pawns get this they'll they'll be uh whatchamacallit they'll be less they'll they'll listen to they won't listen to the arisen or whatever. And I was like, huh, that's odd. I wonder if that's gonna come into play later. So I actually haven't looked into it too much to see what's going on with all that. I was talking about the one my crime. I was hoping that's maybe Swordmaster and Rogue Guard wouldn't exist in your game. Well, it probably isn't just uh, it, like I I I know what those are because I played DMC. I think like I don't think the actual class is called Swordmaster. I think it's like Fighter or something. But you know, I I just I just associate Royal Guard with them parries, baby. We love that shit. Dragons would absolutely want to be CEOs of companies. Yeah, why wouldn't they? Infinite wealth, big horde, dragon happy. Got some unruly uh, employees? Toast them. <laughs> F literally fire them. Isn't almost all well water, though. Fucking, li like, water droplets emoji. That's another one. <laughs> That's another one. That one, you know, you could probably work more. But, like, I see that and I just... I auto-complete with a fucking, like, eggplant next to it. It's bad. The internet has done things to me. Magic Archer requires you to go the long way around to the Volcano Island, and then you escort a guy to the camp on the island. See, I haven't been to Volcano Island just yet. Uh, I think that was going to be like one of my next places I go and check out. Because I kind of need a Medusa head for one of the quests. 
one of the du- the dudes was like, you know, if you were able to petrify this griffin, I'd be able to really sketch you a cool commission. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I mean, I could probably bait it for a while and give you one, like get, let you to get your sketch, but it would be really cool to just, you know, go kill a Medusa. I don't know. When it comes to like fights in that game, I live for the big fights, like the the day to day job, like jobbing on some idiots, like that's fine. But like where where I start to go, yeah 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 yeah, is when we fight big stuff. So like whenever someone's like, go fight the big thing, I'm like, all right, chief, you got it. <laughs> oh, you know what? I should mention my first Griffin kill because that was pretty funny. Um, it was after I fought a a fucking Drake. I like it just killed the Drake and then the Griffin showed up out of nowhere and I was playing Archer and I was like in an area where there's a bunch of bridges and some water and I was just shooting the the Griffin while I waited for it to come down and then I guess I shot it enough that it like flinched and I just saw it like fall into the water. The brine reached up and said, "You are ours now." And ate it and I was like, "Oh. <laughs> I was going to eat that." Damn it. And there was another time I was fighting a Minotaur and I just killed the Minotaur, saw an ox cart, and I was like, oh, cool. I guess I'll hop on that to the next town or like the closest town. And then the Griffin just, like just comes down, eats it, and I'm like, how many times do I get to teach you this lesson, you fucking idiot? And then I killed it. I got a lot of Griffin stories now that I think about it, because there's also a Griffin story where I was uh, first playing Trickster and I made a golem kill the Griffin. <laughs> I just tagged it and I said, Shoot that thing now! And then it killed it. Not instantly, mind you. It took a little bit, but we were good. You consider doing a horror stream? Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you know. The thing with horror, though, is, like, I don't get scared by much, so it's not like... You wouldn't have a situation where I'm playing, like, Five Nights at Freddy's, and I'm going, Oh, no. Oh, no. I just... Ah! I'd just be like, Oh, man. They got me. <laughs> Funny that I mentioned Five Nights at Freddy's because I actually do have Help Wanted 2 on the docket at some point for a nice fun VR stream. I will trade one dragon scale for all your money and value. Trust, very good deal. Oh, sure. I've got like six of those. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. Oh, wait. All, all my money and value? Oh, never mind. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got the I got the fucking I got the, the flow of the cashola there wrong. Uh oh. Can I, can I go back on that? Cause I've got like a lot of money. <laughs> I think I've got like 300 grand or some shit right now. I can do eggplants if you want. Fucking just like a fucking dude emoji. Engine dragon, Jeff Bezos versus dark or orc CEO, Elon Tusk. Elon Tusk doesn't stand a fucking chance. Let's be real. Probably should go for games like Outlast or Alien Isolation, which build tens- tension more than jump scares. Between those two, I think it would have to be Alien Isolation, because I've already played Outlast. Wouldn't be too much going on there. Plus, I just kind of, I kind of like fucking just book it in Outlast. I'm like, yo, you can't catch me, motherfucker. I'm like playing Mirror's Edge over there. Phasmophobia. Nah. <laughs> No, if you go in the archive, you can see that I've I've played Phasmophobia. Like, <laughs> the only thing that gets me to come back to Phasmophobia at this point is because I put in enough time that I want to get like the event stuff. So Jeremy and I will like roll out of the bed, groggy eyed, come over to like Phasmophobia, boot it up, and be like, "Fuck, let's get this done with." <laughs> Like, don't get me wrong, Phasmophobia is a good game, but when you have, um, well, let's see here real quick, uh, let's see, uh, Phas, yeah, 40 hours, by the way, I, I, I've been playing the fuck out of this, uh, Phasmophobia, uh, when you have almost 200 hours, uh, the ghosts aren't, go- like, scary anymore, they're just, uh, you're just playing puzzles, that, that's all you're doing. There we go. FNAP and instead of jump scares inject you with the feelings of getting you one ending for the first time. <laughs> oh, so you mean actual psychological warfare. Okay. Yeah, that would give me a reason to be like, no, don't do it. The true horror. Alien isolation is good one. Run equals death. Yeah, that 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 alien, they got some smarts in them, that's for sure. True horror. 
Dead Space, Silent Hill, and Condemned. I like those horror games. We did uh, we did Dead Space on stream when the uh, remake came out. And I also, I think I played uh, Dead Space 3. I don't remember if I did it on stream, but I played that with my brother. And it's one of those games that like I could see why people didn't like it. But to be honest, playing with a friend was pretty good. I really wish they leaned more into the um, you see things that your uh, co-op partner doesn't. Cause that was, that was my favorite part when it was like, I'm seeing like fucking, cause I, I th was I playing Carver? I think I was playing Carver and I was seeing like a bunch of, um, like nutcrackers around and I'm like, dude, what's up with all the nutcrackers? And my brother goes, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, what, like right over here, like right in front of me. He's like, that's a pole dumbass. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That shit was fun. I like that. When it comes to Silent Hill, I actually haven't played... Uh, I think the only Silent Hill I've played is Silent Hill Homecoming. I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, Shattered Memories. Homecoming and Shattered Memories, I think, are the only two that I've played. Like any sudden movements at all. Yeah, for Alien Isolation. As that advanced AI that learns what you do and adapts. Yeah, well, if I don't know what I'm doing, how can they adapt to it? You know what I mean? For horror stream, you can read tax laws. <gasps> Look, I don't want to. I think I don't want to petrify people. All right, <laughs> I just want to give them a nice little spook. It's kind of how Outlast Trials went for me. Spooky at first, then everything is just degrees of chores. Yeah, I mean, like that makes sense. The thing with Outlast Trials for me is, like, one thing that kept me, like, on edge is that, um, I have yet to die. <laughs> I have not died yet in Outlast Trials. I've gone down, like, a handful of times, but I have not died. And I've, like, uh, I've released, I think, like, t two or three reagents. So I I've, I've put in the time, and, like, I'm trying to keep that going as long as I can. Um, of course, it's been a while since I've played it. Uh, at some point, I need to check out the update that they put out with the, uh, like, new trial and everything, but I don't think they added a, uh, new, like, enemy, did they? Or no, I did check out, the, I checked out the, the courthouse, I don't remember if that's the latest one or not, but I wanted, like, a new enemy, uh, a new big spooky to come chase me and shit. Five Nights at Fang's objective, survive Fang's dad. Ripley rips the door off when you close it and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Uh-oh. You could also do readings of horror stories for a uh, horror stream. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned before doing like something like just reading um, like SCP or something. I'd also be willing to do like just some creepypasta type readings. Because those can be fun. There's some good ones out there. Just because you don't know what you're doing doesn't mean you don't have subconscious patterns. Yeah, but yeah, but the alien won't know that, right? <laughs> the alien can't figure that out. Sweats a little bit. Tugs on my collar. Man, it suddenly got hot in here, you guys. <laughs> I I feel like I need some water. Unscrews my water bottle. Cosmic horror fans when I show them Cosmic Mario. Yeah, never seen such a polarized genre as horror stories. Either complete ass or I'm pissing myself by the end. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I've never found, like, a story that's made me go, <gasps> at least not since I've, like, grown up. Sure, like, when I was a little fucking idiot child, I'd say, No! <laughs> you can't do that! It's scary! But... <clears throat> I mean, nowadays, most stories are like, oh, that was pretty good, or, oh, okay, <laughs> that was not great. <laughs> the, the, the bingo bongo monster came out of the closet and grabbed them. You know, the thing we saw coming, like, a mile away. Now, if you hide under the stuff a lot, the alien will start peeking under things. Then I'll just run past it and give it a nice little <laughs> on the ass as I run by. And it won't know whether it needs to call HR or if it wants to pursue a relationship with me. And that'll keep it in a perpetual state of stun lock until I can leave. All right, we've almost reached one hour of chatting. Yeah, we burned it. <laughs> we, we burned it early on, guys. <laughs> We're good. We got our... <laughs> we got our government-mandated reading or uh, talking time in. 
I was gonna let it ride for another hour to be honest we'll probably start here soon but like kind of like i said before we're, it's not like we're we have to go at a certain pace if people want to chat we can chat for a while the again these reading streams are kind of like a backdrop for just hanging out and stuff since i don't do like purely just reading or just chatting streams like i know some streamers will have like an hour before stream where all they do is chat most of the time I'm rolling straight into whatever we're actually doing. So if there's people around and they want to just ha like shoot the shit for a little bit, all good. No, no, no skin off my bones. It kind of makes me uh, reminiscent of uh, the kind of like podcast Jeremy and I used to do. I need to get that motherfucker uh, to like start that back up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we had like 11 episodes or something. That shit was fun. Just like hopping on a call like once a week at least and just talking about whatever we want. Good times, good times. You piss yourself because you're scared. I piss myself because it's convenient and I'm a man. We are not the same. I can make you shake. I can vibrate pretty quick. Vita Kanis makes me check the couch sometimes. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Is that a story? Too much piss. Unless. Oh yeah, re <laughs> oh, yeah reading. Facehuggers damn near took my soul in alien isolation. The concept of the facehuggers fuck. They just fucking... They knock your ass out, put a baby in you, and leave. As a man, I can't, I can't, I, I, I don't, I, I please don't do that. <laughs> don't chest burst me. Vita Carnis is an analog horror. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, the only uh, analog horror that I'm really familiar with is like Mandela Catalog. But, um, didn't it come out that like, Alex Kister isn't like really a great guy? I don't know. I haven't been following that whole situation. I just know that there were like some fucking pedophilia claims levied against him and like mistreatment or something. But I saw like a day or like today or a day ago, like someone was like, okay, it looks like the pedophilia claims were disproven. But so I don't know what the fuck's going on all over there. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I've learned nowadays that when there's drama or something, let that shit sit for like a week and then come back and check on it and see how it's, how things are going. Because usually by then, most of the, like the bullshit will have been sorted out to some extent and you can get a clear idea of, okay, well, what's happening here? Are you playing Y2K with the new update? When the new update drops? Man, if people want to see it, <laughs> I, I don't even know how that game is. I've I think I've heard mixed things about it, but, you know... I'm willing to check out Schlock if it would make a good stream. I get I did uh, pick up uh, Angels with Scaly Wings in Class of 09, so those can be played at some point. Can't even possibly imagine what that means. Like full on hard gasp. <gasps> the face hugger. No. like to them you cannot put me in the same room as the <laughs> xenomorph queen my at my hungry ass could not be near a xenomorph that's the kind of vibe you just gave me right there just drama bullshit people want attention i mean that i'd like that's why i'm saying like yeah i, I kind of just let people whenever drama arises just because i mean don't get me wrong you know, sometimes people are fucking assholes and they need to be called the hell out. But at the same time, a lot of people are very quick to jump on something the moment that something comes out because they're like, oh, well, I don't like that guy in the first place. Or, oh, I have pr like a, a proclivity for drama. So, uh, yeah, you're an asshole. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> I mean, maybe we should investigate the facts first, make sure everything looks on the up and up and then go. You know, don't just miss claims. Look into them. But at the same time, maybe save the damning of a, of a person and condemning of all of them for once we've made sure everything looks good. You know? I don't know. I guess that's getting to, like, cancel culture type stuff, right? What do you mean by that? 
You mean just gonna fuck the Xenomorph Queen? He's gonna- He's gonna make babies with the Queen! The only horror stuff I frequently watch are Kane Pixels videos. I did like a, um, I think I had like a day or two where I was like checking out a lot of his stuff. It seemed pretty cool. I liked it. My ass could not be in a sausage party. There's a lot of ways you could take that. You could, you could, you could take it as your literal ass. You could take it as you. You could take it as like a party where you're just trying out a bunch of different sausages. You could take it as where it's not, it's some very specific sausages. Very versatile statement there you've you've thrown in chat. Y2K is definitely a checks notes game. That's what we want to hear, baby. <laughs> we love it. Aka the guy that made the backrooms video that popped off a while ago. He knows how to make cool shit. Has he done stuff uh, other than uh, backrooms? Because I think when I uh, came across him, it was mostly just backrooms that I had seen. <laughs> Person A did this horrible thing. Uh, any proof? Uh, no? <laughs> My sources, I made it the fuck up, so uh, I would ask you to step back for a minute and uh, maybe check yourself before I start saying some shit about you, okay? Looks back in your history, finds one problematic tweet you made. You're an asshole. Bro, I was 13. <laughs> Don't care, didn't ask. Ratio plus owned. Miss the backgrounds, but you can only do creepy abandoned place with entities in it so many times. I mean, I think, uh, <laughs> I mean, people have said it before, like, backrooms kind of became, like, the, the SCP wiki for Zoomers. And, like, you know what? Good on them. Glad they have their thing. But I think part of the appeal of the backrooms was supposed to be the ambiguity behind it. Like, and then they made it so, like, oh, you have an organization, like, that's kind of working in the back rooms to chart out the back rooms. And, you know, again, it's, it's different audience, right? They have their thing. Cool for them. But back rooms for me was more just like a, what the fuck is going on here? Not to mention, I feel like, um, too many things lie, like, when you have, like, back rooms games or anything, they all go back to the same shit that every other backrooms game does when you can really go wild with it. Not enough games take enough risks uh, relating to that. I think it's a huge missed opportunity. Monument Mythos, the Nixon Sphere. <laughs> or the Nixon Verse. See, I did it again. I, I changed a word. The movie, don't watch if you haven't. Worst mistake ever. Not allowed within 150 feet of the Xenomorph Queen. Not because it would kill you, but because you would do heinous things, of course. Twitter discussions described perfectly there, my friend. Yeah. Yeah, I I mean, like, when it comes to Twitter especially, like, the, the, the most I interact... Like, I use Twitter to just go, like, check up on artists and stuff, right? And, like, occasionally if I'm, like, trying to check, like, uh, Twitter for, like, an update for, like, a game or something, and, like, see if they posted anything... But that's all I use Twitter for. Occasionally, I'll see like a fucking this is trending right now, and I'll hop over and be like, "Huh, let me let me peek in here real quick. What do we got going on? Oh, it's people just talking about politics and being the most insufferable pieces of shit ever. Being li like literally trying to talk to an echo chamber with like five brain cells. Oh, cool. No nuance anywhere in here. Great, my favorite. Finds one problem. I tweet when you were two. <laughs> Isn't it fucked up that, like, nowadays that could be a thing, though? <laughs> like, kids are getting on earlier and earlier and earlier. Like, you could actually... I feel like you could conceivably pull up, like, a Goo Goo Gaga tweet for somebody in, like, ten more years. And it would be like... What are you doing? <laughs> that, that was a literal baby. <laughs> Their brain was hardly formed at that point. I mean, if Donkey from Shrek can pipe that dragon, you can make it with the queen. Salute. Updated all my starting mods earlier, but some still not updated for 1.6, so waiting just a bit more. Excited since I heard 1.6 is huge. I actually need to take a look at that. Um, I saw that the 1.6 update dropped. I, <laughs> the thing with me and Stardew is, like, I never stick around long enough to, like, get... Like, I haven't... <laughs> I haven't seen Grandpappy. <laughs> 
<laughs> I am I like stop usually some point in like year two, like halfway. <laughs> And then I just start playing something else. Uh, because, like, I jam out, like, the levels really quick. I'm, I'm, I love me some fishing in that. I'll usually hit, like, level 10 before fucking winter. And I'm like, let's go. <laughs> the fishing has progressed. He has another original series where a guy finds an abandoned mall deep underground. Ooh, that sounds kind of neat. Yeah, but I think you might be confused which way the baby making goes with the xenomorph queen. Look, you need to be real brave if you wanna if you wanna do the breeding with the queen. All right, <laughs> you you gotta you gotta understand, you ain't pitching, you're catching. As long as you got that tucked in your brain and you're still in, by all means, I guess go populate the hive. <clears throat> Can't have shit on Twitter. Can't even make my Goo Goo Gaga tweet. You could probably like post something like you could probably just do like Goo Goo Gaga. And then somebody in the fucking replies will be like, um, actually you're using language that the baby community or the, the baby, the baby people community use. And it feels like you're kind of appropriate in our culture. And I think that's kind of fucked up of you. Maybe you should learn up on it and our diaper practices, um, before you try and act like one of us. Okay. And like, they would say it with zero fucking zero joke in their voice. So they are completely dead serious. And you kind of look around for a minute and you're like, I wasn't even talking to you. Why are you here? <clears throat> Twitter can say YouTube comments is where common sense and converse goes to die, but it is and has always been Twitter. I think people just, I, I, I mean, I think this issue, it, it, it's, it's bigger on Twitter, it feels like, but people just don't. People always want to make other people's problems their problems and then make their problems other people's problems. And I don't know why. I feel like we as a society could <laughs> could be a lot better off if we just stayed in our lane when something does not fucking affect us. You know what I mean? Started 1.6 is pretty big. The wiki still isn't fully updated for even the catalogs. There's like six now. Ooh. Maybe I need to get the boys together and do like a fucking farming weekend or something. That could be fun as shit. Stream started an hour ago. <laughs> Look, <laughs> what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> People like the talky talky. Rolling Giant was hype, not original, but the but that got my little toesies curling up by the end. <laughs> The only thing I know about Rolling Giant is um, there's like a lethal company mod for it. That That's literally all I knew about it. <laughs> and that people were spooked by it. 95% of Twitter is Anon pre-snoot game. The rest 5% is Olivia with the art. And I'd like to focus on that 5% because it brings me joy. E3 Olivia pulls a bridge incident live on stream. Fucking bridge moment, man. That feels like one of those, like, turning points for the internet. At least for YouTube. I mean, obviously for YouTube. Things are never the same after bridge incident. <laughs> Sardew has, uh, now has five additional levels that take more XP than the first set of levels. Yo, real shit, though? I can become even stronger of a fisher? Oh, fuck me. Yeah, alright. Alright, hold up. I gotta, I gotta... I gotta quickly send Jeremy a message. <laughs> hey, we're doing Stardew this weekend. This week. Okay, question mark. There we go. Alright, that, that that one's been sent out now. We're all good. <laughs> the baby community. Breeding a xenomorph isn't something I've looked into deeply, to be honest. I've seen some... I've seen... Alright, look. I, 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 I peruse certain parts of the internet. I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. I've seen some curvaceous aliens. Maybe not some anatomically correct aliens, but I've seen some curvy aliens. Let's go, society. And on society. Uh, society? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody keeps saying society. We love it. Maybe the secret is xenomorphs actually needed dude's essence to make more xenos. No face huggers needed. They just, the the manly urge to just repopulate was never brought in by the humans. 
And then suddenly everything, oh, there we go. Tumblr in the NSFW bin has been a disaster to the internet. The Great Migration. That was definitely a, an interesting thing to see. Did people ever figure out, like, a new site to go to? For, like, all the NSFW stuff? I, th I thought most people kind of just went to Twitter and said, fuck it, we'll stay here until something else rolls around. I don't know if anything ever did, though. I also like how nobody refers to Twitter as X that I know. Like, literally everybody just calls it Twitter. Like, no matter what Elon does to try and rebrand it, it's always going to be Twitter to me and everybody else. And, and, and we're not calling it X. <laughs> Other people doing bridge incident. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Me doing the bridge incident. I'm going to do it again. Look, if you want to have bridge incidents, just make sure you're not recording it or streaming it. <laughs> okay? Like just just keep that one to your just keep that one on the DL, you know. You don't you don't need to put that one out into the into the wild. There's an advanced iridium rod and everything now. One of the many buffs, huge buffs this level five spring. Oh, that's so good. I too may have seen some curvy art regarding Xenos. I'm sorry for starting the down bad conversation of Xenomorphs. Requiem, it's fine. Uh, I think, uh, what was it, uh, <laughs> Baby Hermit Crab, uh, literally cold opened in the stream with I edge to your fang voice, so, um, we, we were already, we were already going very weird places from the get-go today, so, you know what, talking about, uh, trying to pipe the Xenomorph Queen is just, I, I you know, it's really just another thing off the checklist. <laughs> hey, yo! Yeah... Elon is more obsessed with the letter X than pirates. Yeah, that's... That's saying a lot. The pirates like their X's. And R's. Pirate likes R as well. I don't get Elon, man. I, okay. I can understand why Elon does what Elon does, because he's Elon. I don't understand the Elon dick riders, though. Like, I'll look around and be like, Guys. Holy... Holy shit. <laughs> he, he, he said one thing and you're like, Bravo. Smartest man alive. Jesus Christ, Elon. I would have your fucking kids if I could. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Calm down. You know, Elon, he, he, he came out there with that Neuralink all by himself. It's like, you realize he has like a whole team of people working on that, right? Like that, he, he didn't just manifest that. <laughs> Speaking of Neuralink, what, 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 what's, what's the consensus on Neuralink, guys? Personally, I think it's kind of interesting. Am I going to get a Neuralink? Fuck no. <laughs> Not until that shit has been tested for many years. But I do like the concept of having brain interfaces, especially for people who, uh, for example, like, I think one of the videos that was being shown was the, uh, the dude being able to play chess, even though he's, like, completely in a wheelchair and unable to move. That's cool. You know, there's good applications for that type of thing. But, you know, I'm, I'm not jumping up and down, because, like, I don't need it. You know what I mean? Any Neuralinkers in chat? Uh, turns on my, uh, fucking 5G nullification field, uh, your brain short circuits and explodes. I'm gonna live stream it on YouTube and on Twitch. Timber, no! We're gonna lose him! Read up on the HR Geiger and his art and see why people are down bad for xenomorphs. Fangmorph. We really went all gas, no breaks with that xenomorph discussion. Oh no, there was many breaks during that. You must understand. You can go way more in depth about uh, how the intricacies of that would work. But we pulled back. <laughs> this is not a family-friendly stream by any sort of the stretch of the imagination. But even we have some limits. <laughs> a living morph. Gotta go, I prioritize school. Tricking to Xeno R34. Even if I didn't get to hear Fang voice cheers. Alright, <laughs> baby hermit crab, you, you fucking take care. If, if you really need that, that fucking itch later, you can come back to the VOD. I'm, I'm sure we'll have read at some point. <laughs> Elon doesn't get Elon. That's what it means to be eccentric. Maybe I need to just like start Elon maxing myself. 
I think he's done better for Twitter than Twitter could have on its own. It's still just Twitter, though. There's a reason I don't have it. That's fair. Uploads a 50 petabyte gorilla gift to your neural link. <laughs> oh, boy. How much information is out there surrounding Neuralink anyways? Because, like, I feel like the general concept is pretty, like, well-known at this point. But, like, I don't even know how, like, the intricacies are supposed to work and whatnot. If there's any documentation regarding how it's actually implemented and whatnot. And what the capabilities really are. I mean, it might be too high level for my little peon brain, but who fucking knows. Neuralink makes Fangbot real, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. When, so when do I get to do the surgery? Just curious. Asking for a friend. Somebody hand me the flamethrower. This whole chat must be purged. Yeah, we... Government said we can't have flamethrowers, but I, I got a bottle of gasoline right here. Do you want to use this? I hand it over to you. If you want to be really funny, put some styrofoam in it. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Chat has fallen, millions must die. Certainly not enough for it to be really legal. Mm. Mm. Alright. I think for the most part, we we've, we've we've gotten the chatting in here. Ugh. Let me go ahead and readjust myself. We'll go ahead and get a chapter in. At least one chapter in real quick. We're, we're not, almost an hour and a half in the stream. And I haven't even read the title of this fucking chapter. So. <clears throat> Clear my throat. Get in my seat. Nice and cozy. You know, Postal Dude can only do it with a jerry can only. Time to link when Father Elon. Alright. I haven't had to do fang voice in a little bit so hopefully i can like ease back into it easy enough here okay so we left off last time we were playing or not playing jesus christ we were reading um chapter five of broken wings i think we left off with fang and anon kind of sort of getting back together now uh and F anon stayed the uh, night at fang's apartment hold up just a sec All right, sorry about that. Brother popped in. Uh, needed to uh, just chat with me real quick, but we're good. All right, so yeah, what was I saying? Uh, Anon stayed the night at Fangs. Uh, they kissed, they cuddled, and now we're here. So starting today with Chapter 6, Rekindled Fire. <clears throat> Let's give a little boop here. And we'll begin. My eyelids flutter open to the sounds of freshly cooking bacon, the aroma sending my nose into overdrive as I take in the scent. Anon obviously woke up first, somehow getting untangled from my uh, blanket and me without waking me up. I take a deep sniff, a content grin spreading across my beak as I sigh. Holy shit, that smells delicious. I haven't had bacon in years. Anon smirks and flips an egg in the pan, with it landing with a satisfying sizzle. I got up an hour ago and thought, fuck it, let's celebrate. Walked to the grocer and snagged us a few goodies. I get up from the couch before sliding up next to him, resting my head on his shoulder, rubbing my cheek against his. Only just started dating again and you're already being good to me, hi, Anna. I've got a lot to make up for, Fang. It's the least I can do. He leans his cheek against mine while still masterfully flipping eggs onto freshly melted butter while dodging grease from the spattering bacon. Well, I'll grab some plates. Don't want you to get scorched with me leaning on you. I, a, I plant a quick kiss on his cheek before popping open the cupboard. Boy, I need to get some new fucking dishes. Got maybe a couple plates left. Good enough for now, though. Fishing through the drawers for a couple of forks, I set them down on the table. A minute later, he walks over with a toasty frying pan before scooping out the goodies onto both plates. After setting the pan back in the oven, on the oven, he settles down next to me. 
He picks up his fork before letting it rest on the edge of his plate, sighing and glancing at me from the corner of his eye. You know, Fang, I never let myself hope we'd have a chance again. I mean, I wanted it, more than anything. But if there was someone out there that didn't deserve a second chance, it was me. I'm mere inches from taking a bite, but that caught me off guard. Lighting the morsel land back on my plate, I put my hand on his knee. Aaron, you fucked up, it's true, and had and me lying to you about it won't do shit, but you came back and apologized. You didn't even have to. You could have left me here and never talked to me again, but you made that choice. You, same as anyone else, deserve a second chance. Hell, even I do. I gently take his hand into mine as he slowly turns to look at me. You mean it, Fang? He intertwines his fingers with mine as he searches my eyes for hope. I do, and I'm giving you that chance. We can't undo the mistakes we made, but we don't have to let them rule the rest of our lives. This is our chance at a new life for both of us. We can't waste it. He nods, a smile growing on his face as he takes in my words. I don't know what kept me here after seeing you. I thought I didn't deserve to try again. But after I saw you, I couldn't leave. Every fiber of my being refused to get out of that seat. <laughs> Fucking glad I didn't. I smile at him, kissing him on the cheek and squeezing his hand before letting it go. I'm glad you stayed too, Anon. I don't want to think about what I would have done that night if I hadn't. Or if you hadn't. I love you. I love you too, Fang. He tears up as the weight of what he just said settles in. It's something I can tell he's thought he'd never get to say or hear from me. All those years must have weighed heavy on his heart. Even if all he thought he wanted was to be alone. After a few more moments, he takes a deep breath, letting out a sigh of joy before turning back to his plate. <sighs> Breakfast with my hot tarot GF. How I fucking miss this. A hint of a blush flashes across my cheeks as I shake my head with a giggle. <laughs> dweeb. I'm your dweeb. Damn right you fucking are. Breakfast is fucking delicious. The eggs are cooked perfectly, and the bacon is that right level of crispy with enough give that it melts in your mouth. It's a welcome flavor after weeks and weeks of pizza and scavenged protein bars. Alan turns the TV on to some Saturday morning cartoons... The old ones back when no one cared if a cartoon character literally tried to decapitate a mouse or shotgun a rabbit. I laugh like a little kid again, seeing them get flattened like a pancake by an anvil while I eat. And on just stares at me for a bit, a smirk on his face as he watches. What you staring at, dweeb? Fang. The most beautiful tarot I had never once deserved in my life, but who I am so fucking grateful for. My face turns bright red as I desperately and futilely attempt to cover my face with my hands. God, you still have to be that cute doofus, don't you? He smiles smugly with a wink. I sure fucking do. This day and every other day I get to spend with you. I jab him in the side with my elbow. A favorite tactic I'm glad to bring back. To work. I'll get you back for that. I'm looking forward to it. He twirls his fork in his hands and taps on his chin before looking over at me again. I have to ask, though, what do you mean by a second chance for you? What exactly happened with you after I left? I sigh and set aside my plate, pushing it back across the table before resting my head in my palm, tapping the side of my beak with my claws. I basically fucked off from my family. A few weeks after graduation, well, after you disappeared, I packed my bags and told them I was leaving. I didn't tell them where I was going. And I never had any intention of going back. Mom was hurt. Dad was pissed. And Hazard just sat there as I walked out the door. A wave of concern flashes over Anon's face as he gives me his undivided attention, only speaking up after I stop talking, my eyes focusing blankly on the wall. Shit, Fang. Sorry. Didn't mean to bring up raw memories. I blink and lean back into the couch, lazily waving off his apology. It's fine. It's better to get everything out in the open if we're going to be together again. He reaches over, 
taking my hand in his and gently caressing it with a confused look on his face. Why didn't Nazar say anything? It's not like him to be idle, especially not when it comes to you. Because I didn't want him to. That takes him by surprise as both of his eyes shoot wide open. I told him I was leaving, and I told him not to fucking try. If he had, I would have severed contact with him. I needed to know I could trust him, even a little bit. And he proved it. And we talk still. And every week, whenever he's got time and I'm not passed the fuck out. Well, that's good at least. Never known him to be unreliable. Naive as fuck, and sometimes shoving his nose into shit he shouldn't. But he cares a lot about you. He does. Always asking if I'm living the dream. <laughs> as if you can have much of a dream in Skin Row outside of not getting fucking stabbed. He leans closer and turns my snout to face him. Serious look in his eyes I did not expect to see. What is your dream, Fang? What do you want out of life? The question hits hard. This is far more serious than Anon ever acted when we dated in school. He really hadn't... He has changed so much, hasn't he? Well, for the better, it seems. I look away as he holds my face gingerly in his hands before settling my eyes back on his. I... I didn't really have much of one anymore. I mean, I came down here trying to start over, end up nearly fucking dead and penniless. I guess my dream is still the same thing it's always been. To be in a successful band. I don't need to be rich. Hell, not even famous. Just good enough to be seen as a musician instead of a back alley fuck up. Tears slide down my face, but Anon wipes them away before they can hit the ground as he keeps my gaze locked onto him. Then that's what we'll do together. I can't play music for shit, but I can be a hype man if you need to be. Someone to spread the word and get people to shows, because you deserve it. You are not some back alley fuck up. You're fucking Fang, the punk rock badass that I love. His words hit home, nearly causing the dam holding back my tears to break. This is so different from before. Supportive and caring. If there was any sign of him doing this just to score an easy lay, I can't find it. it truly has changed. He believes in me. That's all I need to push forward and stop living here wasting my life away. Tenderly grabbing his face with both my hands, I stared directly into his eyes, the fire in them burning in a way they hadn't since I was back in high school. One spark is all it takes to start an inferno, and he struck the match. <laughs> You're fucking right, Anon. I can't just spend my life playing tiny shows in this backwater. I could take this storm by I could take this town by storm, and I fucking will. His grin grows wider as he stares back at me with an intensity in his eyes that rivals my own. Fuck yeah, you will. And I'll be right here at your side the whole way. As I always should have been back then. I gently shake my head as I peer in his eyes. Back then doesn't fucking matter now. What matters is right here. We're gonna make it count. With a stern nod, he lets go of my face, our hands meeting together as they fall, both of us still gazing intently at each other. Then my stomach decides I've been fucking around too long and lets out the loudest grumble I've ever heard in my life. My face turns bright red as he snickers at me. Ugh. After breakfast, though. He keeps laughing it to himself as he smiles. Of course. Rest of our food first, the town after. It takes me a moment to get my face to stop looking like a ripe cherry as I poke an egg with my fork and flip it into my mouth, earning a smirk from Anon. I was so prepared not even a couple months ago to waste away to nothing, not doing a thing to stop it, but now I feel like I have something to fight for. My eyes drift over to Anon, who's in his own world, probably already planning what he's going to do to help me push my band to new heights. Smile curls on my lips as I look at him. This dweeb, the one who admittedly set me on this path to start with, is now here, doing everything he can to make up for lost time. For a lifetime of mistakes. I can't lay it all at his feet, though. I didn't have to leave. Could have stayed with my parents and made something myself. Not that it matters anymore. I have what I need now to start again. I won't let it pass me by this time. 
A memory sparks in my mind as I look at him. Memories of time long ago with us in my room, failing horribly to study, but instead finding something new in ourselves. I finish off the last bits and on my plate before getting up and sliding the plate onto the counter. I walk to my guitar case. The dust and cobwebs have built up after years of neglect. He watches me closely, his eyes lighting up as I pick up the case and blow the dust off, swiping away the webs. I make my way back to his side before placing the case on the table, popping it open and pulling out the very same guitar I used to teach him how to play. I can see the tears in his eyes as he watches my hands lift it out and place it in my lap, twisting the pegs as I tighten the strings and tune it, slowly bringing it back to life. Man, how the day went by when I didn't think of that moment. He rubs his eyes with his sleeves and sniffles. <laughs> you showed me something beautiful. Something I believed I'd never see again. I say nothing, only smiling at him as I finish tuning it, giving it a few last drums with my pick. Before I begin to play, I gaze into his eyes, searching for any reason though at all to hold back, finding nothing in his but wonder and hope. There's nothing left to fear. My Anon was back, repentant and filled with the desire to be where he always wanted to be, by my side. I start slow, gliding my hand across the fretboard, plucking a few soft notes from the strings. Didn't take long for him to realize what I was starting to play as he leans against my shoulder, the memories make, uh, taking him back to better times, a time where we'd been all we needed, two souls trying to find meaning in our lives and to have someone to share our dreams with. I hum along with the notes, my tail swishing to the tune. And on silently reliving that moment on that bed where he'd said the words he never knew he'd said out loud. All that matters is her. I could have held on to the hate. Could have told him to fuck off when he came back that night on the beach. Could have become a miserable, hateful bitch, never letting anyone in ever again. If I had, we both would have been lost forever. Finishing the last note, I rest the guitar against on rest the guitar against uh, the arm of the couch and look at him. He slowly pulls back to reality, sitting back up straight, his cheeks stained with tears. I can see from the look on his face that he ha can't find the words to say, which doesn't matter. There's no need to say a thing. It's written across his face and his entire body. He has hope again, just as I do. I reach out my wing, pulling him closer to me and wrapping my arm around his waist, his arm reaching under my wing to hold me close. We both silently embrace one another, the sound of our heartbeats in unison the only thing we can hear. There's so many ways our lives could have gone from the point we reunited on the beach. It could have been our last meeting, going our separate ways until one day we were found dead in our homes. It could have been me tearing him down until nothing but shards remained. But instead, we both made a choice that night, to try again, to live where it would have been so easy to just give up. Now, here we are, sitting on a couch in each other's arms, hopeful and once again in love. Don't really believe in fate, but it seems we were never meant to be parted. The universe refused to let our story end so painfully. A soft chuckle escapes my lips, causing Anon to perk up and look at me. It's got you laughing, Fang. I flick away a tear from my eye, smiling down at him. Just the absurdity of it all. How <laughs> you ended up back in Skin Row, come to one specific pizzeria out of the dozen scattered around to find me on that stage. How you didn't leave and you said you had no reason to stay. I pull him in closer, resting my head on his shoulder as I close my eyes. Anon, thank you. Thank you for coming back. He gulps down a knot in his throat as he presses his cheek against mine, tenderly caressing my back and keeping me close. Thank you, Fang, for giving me another chance to do this right. To love you like I should have. I don't know what the future holds, but all I know is I need you in it. Life isn't worth living alone. I quietly nod in agreement rubbing my snout against his cheek in return. I could lie, 
I could say I didn't need him to be okay, or that he didn't need me. But that's exactly what it would be. A fucking lie. I don't want to lie anymore. I want to live. Here's my chance right in my arms. I pull away, gently letting his arms fall from my back, my wings settling behind me as I hold his hands in mine. So, Anon, I know you can't play guitar, and I think if you're going to be the hype up of the band, you should know a bit. So, I think it's time for another lesson. He has no time to react before I pick up the guitar and slide it into his hands, guiding him down onto the floor before I sit behind him, settling in close. I can feel his heart quickening as my hands once again glide his to the strings. Just like before, all those years back, and the feelings come rushing into my heart. The tear falls from my cheek onto his shoulder. I never thought I'd get to do this again. Anon's body stays perfectly still against mine, his hands following my movements as I teach him chord after chord. My hands correct as any time he loses his place, and each time he gets a little better than the last. Barely a word is said beyond me giving instructions and him sometimes dropping an expletive when he misses a string. Years of me neglecting to play my guitar hasn't dulled my abilities. It's like riding a bicycle, each step coming back to me naturally. With our bodies so close, we're blushing the whole time like we're kids in school again. I was whittled away to ever improving sounds of my teaching paying off. After seeing his fingers getting raw, I stopped to listen before he loses any blood. Not bad, dweeb. You forgot everything, but you're picking up again pretty quick. Like I said before, helps when you have a good teacher. Another wave of crimson stains my cheeks as I smirk at him. <laughs> well, good, because you're going to need to spend a lot of time here learning. Wouldn't miss it for the world, Fang. We sit there for a while, just cuddling on the floor before he shifts a bit. Question burning in his eyes. You know, since we're currently digging through past memories... I have to ask, what happened to everyone else? I tilt my head to look him in the eyes. What do you mean? You know, Stella, Rosa, Trish, Reed, all of them. I haven't seen them once anywhere. Not that I went looking, but strange that I haven't caught sight of them at some point. A sigh escapes me. A couple of those names are not something I enjoy thinking about. But I can't sit here and say nothing. Stella and Rosa? I have no idea. Hadn't really planned to keep in contact with them. I mean, the only thing we had in common was me going to detention all the time in gardening club. Figured they've got to be out there somewhere, probably living the dream. Those two wouldn't have ended up here. Puts a hand on mine. And I know that he wants what he wants to know next, but doesn't suck any less. And Trish and Reed? A frown spreads across my face thinking of the two. I don't hate them, but didn't end well either. We drifted apart. After you disappeared, Trish tried to elbow her way back into my life. Trying to take control, as she always seemed to fucking love doing. He grips my hands tighter, trying to comfort me as my body starts to shake. One day, she pushed me too far, and I slapped her so hard she slammed into her locker. He just stared at me in disbelief while Trish was climbing on the floor in a heap, and that's the last I ever saw of them. Shit. Sorry, Fang. I seem to be really good at digging up old wounds. It's alright, Anon. Sniffle hard, drying a few tears on his shirt. It doesn't matter now. Wherever they are, they've got to be doing better than I have been. Not that I want to see them again anyway. Trish saw you. You know exactly what she'd want to do. Taps his chest with a smirk. Pale me with those nubs of horn she's got. Yep, right through your chest without stopping. But who cares about them? We don't need them. We'll make it on our own just fine. I know it. You're right, Fang. Because I just want to know how it went for everyone else. suppose I'll never know, but we've got work to do. Gotta build up your image so one day it'll be your name hanging over Volcadera stadiums and lights. I smile. The dream on my lips. My band's name up there. It's almost too good to believe. But after everything I've gone through, 
I can see it being a reality for the first time in years. <laughs> well, let's get to it, dweeb. Start telling me your plans. I need to tell Benji I'm going to start playing my guitar instead of my bass. We spend the rest of the weekend going over all the details. He's going to go around and print out some posters with our logo on them and details about the nightly shows at the pizza time. Every spare moment he has, he'll be hitting the message boards of our local talent scouts, anyone seeking new bands to play in their venues. The rest of the time, he'll just be hanging out in the corners of Little Trudon, spreading the word to the locals at the stalls. For my part, I'll be practicing my ass off, writing new songs and bringing new energy to my performances. Garn of the days of me writing the most depressing crap I can come up with. Instead, I'll focus on bringing some more to this dreary backwater pile of crap. Though, I probably shouldn't refer to it as a crap heap if I want to endear anyone to the band. I text Benji about my playing guitar and he's ecstatic. He's been hoping for this day for ages. He's way better at bass than, I, uh, than me and had been waiting for his chance to shine as well as mine. And as the pieces fall into place... I feel good. Better than I have in years. I have a plan. I have a hope. I have someone by my side who I never thought would be in my life again. But with him here again, there's nothing in this world that can hold me back. Not anymore. And end chapter. All right, all right, all right. Let's take a quick look at the chat here. Forget cat girls, you only give us Dino G. I feel them. It's the it'll be the natural extension, I'm sure. Crave the snoot, Dino cat girls, an abomination of the perfect mate. Oh Jesus Christ, we're really uh, just fucking combining the whole gene pool that we can, aren't we? Cat girls is old news. Dino girls is the new shit. Reject for embrace lizard brain. Greatest enemies sizzling, piping hot, cooking oil. <laughs> Man, I fucking. <sighs> I pan cook like a lot of stuff whenever I actually cook. So like I could put my like bacon in the microwave or in the fucking oven, but I always slap that shit into a pan and let that shit sizzle. The one that fucks me over the most though is when I'm cooking burgers in a pan and that shit starts leaping up and like just splashing on my arm a little bit. Cause I flipped it and ugh. I'm like, owie, my arm. I feel like I got to get like some fucking like cleaning gloves and just slip those on like for the splash resist. Gentlemen, gentlemen, can we please not have... Can we have both? I suggested a triple hybrid. It appears to have been rejected. Aren't kobolds sometimes drawn more cat-like? Many creatures have been drawn as cats. Actually, if cats are liquid, can you pour them into a container shaped like something else? Would we get that creature with cat-like behaviors? Real thinking man's question there. HMOFA is truly the best pairing. People can cook with that, that's for sure. Chef's kiss. Romulus and Remus, raised by a she-wolf. Turkey, also a she-wolf in Legends. History, HMOF, Pilt. <laughs> Yo, people people out there, it's, it's some people want to act like this shit's a new thing. It's like, nah, bruh. Go look at that shit right over there. Look at the ancient history. Everybody wanted this shit. <laughs> We're just following in our ancestors' footsteps, truly. Plot twist is that the real Anon died at sea, but the puppet palace transmuted puppet Anon's soul into the dead Anon and revived him with all the normal Anon's memories. Is, is that is that how we're going to reason out <laughs> the change in E2 here? We, we fucking necroed Anon? With the puppet pals. That'd be a fucking twist, wouldn't it? That'd be a twist in a goddamn half. Oh boy, hour long tangent time. Uh, it's all dependent on if I can think of something to drown out for an hour. <laughs> wow, things are going really well. Looks at how many chapters are. Okay, how is this going to try and punch me? That's what I'm sitting here thinking, right? Like, we're only on chapter six. And like at this point, you could like have ended the ended the story. You you have the reunion, you have the get back together, you have them actually being good now and a hopeful future. Like that that is a place where you could be like, okay, we're cool. We ended chapter six. But there's what, 19 chapters, right? Yeah, 19 chapters. If I were to take a guess, okay, we're obviously gonna follow Fang and the uh 
Fang and the band's adventure to actually becoming known, right? And the trials and tribulations that we're going to face are maybe Trish and or Reed uh, coming back into the life. There's got to be a reason for the pacing is the way it is and it gives me anxiety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, though. There's no way that this doesn't end well. Wouldn't that be fucked? They they go through this, like, E2 cope fic here. Everything goes good at the end. And then, like, something terrible happens. Fucking Anon gets shot and dies. And Fang crumbles. Wouldn't that be fucked? Wouldn't that be, like, so, like, mean? <laughs> Rule 34 was made because we noticed the pattern of humanity wanting to bone everything. It didn't create the weirdness of humanity out of nowhere because we named it. Look. I think for a lot of people, it's a natural thought, at least even in passing, to look at something and be like, hmm, if that were more humanoid, would I fuck it? I mean, shit, you see those pictures of like the fucking like trees that got like, that look like they got a huge dumpy and then there's somebody out there like, my horny ass could never. I think the uh, the statement where there's a hole, there's a goal uh, tends to uh, reflect that ideology pretty well. I'm not surprised Anon ended up in a better way. The Navy didn't let him waste away. Shove that food in your gullet, boy, and give me 20. Yeah, I mean, like, that's... Uh, you know, say what you will about all uh, the army and shit. At the very least, you get... There's some discipline there, right? They're not going to let you just be... A fucking waste necessarily I say as someone who's never been in the army you know funny enough even though I I guess what would you consider it like an army family like my dad served and everything I never really was that like enamored with some like some people are you know like I, I at no point did I ever say hmm I should go into the army right it, it in fact I think my dad even said I hope that you and your brother don't go <laughs> and have to have to serve and everything so like and, I mean that was like later on like when I was a bit older but even when I was a kid, it never really struck me as like, oh, I want to go be a soldier. And I mean, that's only been further reinforced nowadays where I'm like, nah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to war to die for some fucking corpo. Fuck that. Like the most I'd be willing to do is like some fucking bookkeeping. You're not putting me on the front fucking lines. I'll just break my, if you try and send me out for service, I'm breaking my leg. A small price to pay. You know what I mean? Oops. You can't put me out there. I can't run. Sorry. And before Anon gets shot or shanked, nothing is going to stop us now. Something is going to stop them crying emoji. <laughs> we got the rest of our lives ahead of us. The one month timer. <laughs> E2 fanfic, even worse edition. Someone was down bad when they made Anubis. The god of judgment. Wait, is Anubis the god of judgment or the god of death? Hold up. Let me let me let me let me fact check myself before I go spewing shit. Anubis. Anubis Power World. No. <laughs> Wait, hold up. If I type Alright, so hold up. Cause it was there for a second. Anubis. Okay. The first couple of searches are Anubis tattoo, Anubis meaning, Anubis symbol, Anubis dog, Anubis wife. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, ancient Egyptian god of funerary practices and care of the dead. Okay. Let Anubis take care of me. Being furry means you want to identify with something not human. I'm human through and through. 
I just want a piece of tarot, tarot ass. I can agree with that. <laughs> Service guarantees citizenship. Are you doing your part? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm out here being devious, my guy. I got that malicious compliance, my guy. Does it pass the Harkness test? Fuck. I know I've heard the Harkness test before, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Harkness test. The criteria. Does this character have human intelligence or greater? Can it talk or otherwise communicate with language? And is it of sexual maturity for its species? Ah, yes. I pretty much follow that to a T. Un unless somebody says, yeah, but what about this? And then I have to, uh, like, answer to that. But, you know. That those are usually some pretty good ones to, to live by. Service is supposed to put you through the ring or two. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. Like, from what I understand about, like, basic training and everything when it comes to, like, fucking, like, being in the army and shit. Like, I get it. I guess, like, the drill instructor thing and being fucking yelled at and, like, berated. I don't know. I don't feel like that's quite the uh, the kind of environment I would uh, necessarily thrive in. <laughs> to be fair, furry has kind of diluted down to just liking anthros. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely become like a huge spectrum, right? Like, you can. I feel like you can be. Like, of course, people are going to have, like, only a surface level understanding. Someone would be like, oh, furries are the people who dress in fursuits, right? And think that they're animals and piss in, like, a litter box. And it's like, no. <laughs> no, that's just one side of it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, yeah, like, I feel like, yeah, if you like anthropomorphic animals, I guess to some extent you're a furry, I suppose. I don't know. There, there's lines you can draw. It just kind of depends on the person and what their definition of it is, I suppose. I want to hug that Anubis. Take care of my dead body, Anubis, please. Give it a nice hug. <laughs> It'll bring me so much joy. You don't understand. I think the quote was like, you can be deaf and blind, but they'd find a place to put you. It would push you to your limits. It's wrong, but the spirit is there. Yeah, I mean, finding a use for even those who think they're useless. I mean, that that's that's a it's, it's kind of an uplifting sentiment. Um, but at the same time, the uh, I I don't I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> if I was blind and deaf, I don't know if uh, service is necessarily where I'm thinking of going. Like that, you, I feel like you're scraping the bottom of the barrel a little bit there when you're coming to your troops. Not to, not to, not to say that, you know, the fucking use, uh, I'm just talking myself into a bit of a hole now, aren't I? Not the Harkness test. People of the past. Here's what we believe is the being that judges us. He's got a dog head because it's scary. <laughs> Modern day man. But what if she had boobs and was a wife? But, but what if, what if I conquered? What if I conquered the god? in my own way you know some people some people they're out here like i want to i want to go out there i don't want to fight god i want to beat god and then there's other people who are out there i want i want to fight god i could take him and everybody's like hell yeah my guy beat him up and they just kind of like they tilt their head forward and they like look at you and they got that devious look on their face and the other person's kind of like it you're gonna, you're gonna beat him, right? No other words exchanged. There's an understanding that there. There are people who thrive in order and discipline, and the army is for that. Molds the callow flesh into soldiers and officers who live to live and die to ensure that we can live in comfort. Yeah, by all means, like don't, don't, uh, don't get it like twisted or anything like I, I I can appreciate like what the purpose of a soldier is although I'm also of the mindset that just because you're a soldier doesn't necessarily mean I have to respect you as a person 
Like that might be that, that might be kind of a hot take, but I can appreciate what somebody has done to like I guess however you want to phrase it, defend democracy, uh, fought for this country, uh, put your life on the line. You know, I, I can I can respect that, right? Like obviously somebody's got to do. It. It's kind of like being a janitor, right? If if nobody's doing it, the place is just gonna fall into disarray, I guess, and it's gonna be bad. But I don't like it when there's like certain people, because you know there's people out there like that who are like, I serve this fucking country. You ought to show me some goddamn respect. It's like, no, you're an asshole. <laughs> I don't like you. Like you you've made this your whole personality. And you just come off as a dick. But Plague of Gripes doing God's work. It fucking A right he is. It's funny because I remember uh, finding Plague of Gripes through fucking Super Best Friends, and then like just being like, "Oh, okay, let me keep it. Let me keep an eye on Plague." And like, uh, I, I haven't checked out his stuff in a little while now, but I remember back in the day, like just listening to him like uh, ramble on. Like, I, I think he, I, I don't think he had like necessarily. It might have been a podcast type deal, but like they would also do the things where it's like the uh, the time lapse of like a uh, drawing or whatever, and he's just talking over it, and those are pretty nice. Harkness test is basically part of the consensual part of safe, sane, consensual. Sane is ultimately a redundancy. If it's not safe and consensual, it's not sane. True. Very real. Though some people are, you know, some people are like, okay, hey man, if the Xenomorph Queen's cool with it, let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... You know, sometimes safe isn't necessarily the first thing on their mind. <laughs> I'd say if you often find yourself looking at anthro characters like, Zam, that kind of makes you some kind of furry. <laughs> My man. In the reference to the Plague of Graves. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing that people need to be more willing to accept is that labels are just supposed to be descriptors. It doesn't necessarily define like who you are if that makes sense like it's a good way to explain to someone like obviously we have labels in place to help at a surface level understand something about someone like if you're going to introduce your uh, like either yourself or someone else to someone you know you have to have some way to kind of give them an idea of what to expect right you don't just throw them in the deep end you say this is tom talk you say something like, oh, this is Tom. He's a, he, he, he plays games. He's a bit of a gamer. Um, we hang out on the weekends. We also do some tabletop stuff. It's all good. You know, you use kind of labels to help explain that. But I feel like people too often lean into labels as being like, this is who this person is at their core. When people are way more complex than that. So if you say that somebody's a furry, people are automatically going to have like a whole bunch of assumptions made um, about every facet of the character when in reality if you say that somebody's a furry just at, at that point unless you explain it further it could just be oh hey they uh, they they think that uh anthropomorphic uh things are cool so i don't know does that tangent make any sense still can't believe he, uh, he made a prequel to select your partner he made a prequel or a sequel to that I'm going to have to pull that up later for some research purposes. Sorry, Anon, your friends died for Rhino Rex's cause. <laughs> the job title on his own does not warrant respect. Yeah. There's also a lot of furries in the army, I think. You guys ever see that, uh, was it the one post where it was like the, uh, what was it? Like the, the captain or whatever that like retired and he's like, now I can finally like, pursue my uh who i really am and he had like the whole fucking like dog like gimp outfit on and people were like yo what the fuck <laughs> that's crazy good on though like I, I remember watching like a comedy sketch or whatever where like a dude was talking about it and he was like and then like china and russia were like look at these fucking americans and how fucking cringe their army is and, and i was sitting there like yeah but if he came up to me i'd be shitting my fucking pants <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of furries in, like, every 
like sector, right? Like tech sector, there's a ton of them. I mean, what's what's the saying? Like, if they can afford fur suits, they got to be making the big bucks. They could probably also like mail a pipe bomb to you if they really wanted. So don't make fun of them. <laughs> probably different in certain countries, but for a lot of people, military service is just cleaning toilets and falling asleep in guard duty. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, if you're in the, it, it, there's, even in the military, there's got to be menial labor to be done. It's not like always doing something high octane or something intense is being on the front lines or running special ops or anything. Sometimes the latrine needs a little bit of a scrub scrub. People who don't uh, demand respect seldom deserve it. Oh, yeah, that's something I kind of like. That That's, that's something I really fuck with, like. If you want respect, you need to earn it from me. Just be, I don't care. Like, and this is, this goes beyond just like job titles and stuff, right? Like, when it comes to family and whatnot, like be it your parents, your grandparents, extended family, whatever, seniority does not necessarily mean I have to respect you. Like you need to prove to me that you're worthy of respect somebody that i should be listening to someone i should look up to right just because for example like if you have shitty parents like i'm 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 lucky enough that i love both my parents i feel like even though they might have times where i don't necessarily agree with them or they might do something that's a little eh, i don't know about that one they have proven that they are people that I can, for the most part, look up to and people that I can respect, right? But that's not always the case. And it's it really sucks that some people are have it so ingrained in their mind that they have to respect their parents, even if their parents are just straight up pieces of shit, you know? Like, you can... You can be the person that birthed me, but that does not mean for a second that I need to have you be my role model or anything of that uh, of that kind if you don't deserve it if I'm fighting for Dino Geos then what am I even fighting for why are we still here just to suffer I mean Anon did fight for that Dino GF in E3 didn't he <laughs> he fought so he could come home he needed to get home for Fang all the all those all those times he was fucking in the mud Bullets whizzing past him. He he had that he he would reach into his helmet and pull out that picture of Bang, and it would keep him going. Depends on what you do in the military. Pull him Alvin York, and I'll respect the shit out of you. Alvin York. Let's see what he did. Alvin York, American soldier. What was Alvin York known for? Alvin York is a celebrated chapter in Army history. Uh, though he tried to avoid war for religious reasons, York became one of the most notable heroes of World War I for his actions on October, in October 1918. He helped capture over 100 Germans in a mission that could have ended in total failure. Damn, that's pretty crazy. 100. Over 100. Started with the cat girls for me, you know. Then it all went downhill. I feel like that's that that's that's the furry pill, right? The cat girls. You know, you put you put like some cute little uh, put some cute little ears on them. You know, maybe put them in a maid outfit. That, that gets some people's rocks off. You know, they, you get their interest that way. If you figure out a way to integrate it into what they already like, right? Then you start getting it a little further. And then you put a tail on them. You know, you, at first you might be like huh that's a little odd but you know it's fine it's only just a tail and you slowly you slowly start raising that bar up a little bit higher every time and it gets easier and easier and easier stereotypes exist because the mind likes you to group things with various categories you're an idiot to ignore them a fool if you only go by them yeah yeah that's that's true right I, I mean, I guess I didn't really touch on that much earlier that like, while yes, labels are used for surface level, like they, they, they are used because of that, but you shouldn't only, you shouldn't let that guide literally everything about how you interact with somebody. Yeah. 
If you want to bang aliens in Mass Effect, you're some form of anthro enjoyer. Yeah, people need to realize. People need to realize that aliens, you know, sometimes you need to understand. That's not a human. They might look like a human, but that's not a human. You're already starting to get in there. It's getting in your mind. Maybe it's okay to fuck things that are human. Maybe, maybe these things I'm feeling are all right. And then straight down that road. There's that one furry that helped make the COVID vaccine. I'm telling you, like, you know, they're, they're everywhere. If you, if you really look for them, you can find them. At varying degrees, of course, but you can find them. Cute little muzzles, adorable fangs, floofy fur. I'm screwed. <laughs> Yeah, you're already in deep blue leaf. <laughs> the furry scale is now in my mind. Crystal from Star Fox did numbers. Yeah, there's like some standout ones for sure. Like you got like Lola Bunny from fucking Space Jam. You know that that was some people's turning point for sure. God, what are some other ones? Oh, I'm sure there's a ton more. I feel like I actually tried to think about it. But my brain fucking sucks. <laughs> I gotta dig through the archives. Looks human enough. See, you see the real, the real one, the real turning point is when you start, when you start going towards the, uh, it's not really looking human anymore, but I think I could still work with it. <laughs> A little better from Space Jam. Profligates gets all around me. Oh boy. Bang things because they aren't human equals cringe. Bang things into becoming more human. Snoop build. <laughs> Spreading the gene pool for humanity. For democracy, even. I remember a short video claiming the game was rigged from the start and showcased a ton of furry like media over the years. Yeah, I mean, like, oh man. Fucking. Beauty and the Beast? You know? Like. <laughs> <laughs> The, the fact that there's people who are like, wait, no, he looks way worse when he's not the beast. Turn him back. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, you, you, you don't realize it. it's, it's propaganda, truly. You don't realize it's happening in, until you've already switched sides and you're like, fuck, they got me. <laughs> Disney and Looney Tunes showed up a bunch. Yeah, I mean, go figure, right? Oh boy. Alright, I'm gonna uh, hop up real quick and grab a water. It'll only be a second, so I'm not even gonna cut to the BRB screen. I'll be right back. Because this one's empty. This bitch empty. Yeet! I'm back. Okay, been a second. Now it's been more than a second. Listen here, you motherfucker. <laughs> you know damn well I didn't mean just one second. It's a figure of speech, goddammit. <sighs> nice and cold guagua. Ugh. Now I'm getting kind of hungry. Just realized we're fucking like two hours in. We've only gone through one chapter. Holy fucking shit! It's Jover. I, I remember earlier I said that uh, <laughs> I'd woke up like twenty minutes before stream, so I have not eaten dinner yet. The only thing keeping me going right now is that Wendy's. We had it like three, so I'm gonna be reheating some fucking pizza later. I got a nice, good motherfucking pizza in the fridge from uh, over the weekend. I'm gonna heat that up, chow down on that shit. It's going to be fire. I guess from a technical standpoint, it'd be fine to uh, find morally to engage with a creature that has human level intelligence, communication, and adult maturity, regardless of its form. Still would stick in the more human side though. Yeah. But what if they have like a really good personality? <laughs> what, what if they, what if they're like re like, what if you really fuck with them? Not like literally fuck them, but like, you know, you, you're, you're all about what they got going on, you know? That tips the scale, does it not? Uh, 
Like, think about it for a second, right? What if there was, like, a big slime creature? Like, it, it wasn't even, like, resembling a human or anything, but, like, you guys really hit it off. And, like, you, you even went on, like, maybe a date or two. And it's like, okay, it's time, my lover. It's time for us to, to bed. It's like, oh, I gotta stick my dick in the fucking slime and then just let that shit happen. All I have to say... Is if you aren't willing to do it, because because of what what their form is, un unless unless like you find like a a species of alien that just looks like babies, um, in that case may maybe um, uh, yeah no maybe we don't do that one. But if you're like if you can't fuck the the amorphous blob because it's an amorphous blob, you're a coward. You love that blob and you know it. God damn it. Safe part. Questions, what might happen if copulation worked? Blob human. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we haven't, well, I mean, like in, in the animal kingdom, like, crossbreeding obviously happens between like species, but is there... I feel like there's documented instances of like crossbreeding between very unlike creatures as well, right? And that's somehow working. I don't know what happens if they aren't like enough. Does it just does the the impregnation fail and then nothing happens or like what what kind of happens there? Yeah, at that point it's just a different intelligent species that isn't humanoid. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Olivia slime. <laughs> Just the li the puddle Olivia. Yeah, going back to like uh, going back to kobolds, they're like two feet, but not like immature looking or anything weird. Yeah, like uh, I mean that could work, right? I I just mean in the sense of like if there's if there's like something that looks like it shouldn't be mature, I can understand someone being like, uh, I don't really know about this one. This one's not. This, mm, maybe not. Maybe we don't. Ugh. <coughs> okay. Well, we talked about fucking things again, so, uh, <laughs> I guess it's time to go ahead and get them the next chapter, huh? I want to at least try to get to their chapter 10 tonight if we can. Um, just so that way we have at least a similar pace to how we did last reading stream. We'll just have to see how it kind of pans out though. So just an FYI, I think there's some suggestive scenes in this. As long as I don't have to moan on mic, <laughs> I think we'll be good. I just dislike furry, broad definition, YIFCON level shit. It's just how horny everything is constantly. Sometimes wholesome is good enough. Nothing smut level, but obvious enough, I think. Okay, gotcha. Snoot scenes, let's go. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like every... Every community has its down dredgerous group, doesn't it? So, I mean, the fur furries are no, no different. It, it's only... I feel like it's only a problem when... That's all that it is. But, I mean, different strokes, different folks, I suppose. This book definitely sounds like it's going to have sex described in it. And essentially, Preen's Fang. Damn, that'd be prob that would probably be intimate, wouldn't it? Very trusting, very trusting. All right, let's go ahead and get into this next chapter. You can tell by the writing style sometimes. It's kind of like how you can tell like AI art when you fucking see it because it's a very distinct style. All right, chapter seven, Burning Passion. And with a chapter like title like that, oh boy. Friday night. A month has come and gone with the chances already paying off. Or changes already paying off. Benji's a master of the base, never missing this note and backing me up perfectly every performance. Life has returned to my music, 
and with me swaying on stage and belting out my lyrics with a vigor that I hadn't had in four years. No matter the crowd, I try to draw out as much energy as I can out of them, stomping my boots up and down the stage, playing my guitar with as much power as I can pour out. The normally lifeless souls that would drift in and out would stay, seeing my youthful intensity on display. Each night this week, the creek grow, uh, crowd grew just a little more, and I would see a few posters stapled at the power line poles, with some even in the hands of locals. Whatever Anna and I are doing, it's fucking working. Preparing for tonight's show, I sit in the back tuning my guitar while humming to a beat in my head, my tail swinging like a metronome, keeping me on target. Just as I finish, the door opens and Dave steps in, holding a fresh pizza in his arms that he slides onto the table. He looks over at me with a fatherly grin, dusting off his hands and sending flour ever around him. Look at you, Fang. I haven't seen you this happy in ages and you're looking so healthy. He walks over and pinches one of my cheeks. Some meat on those bones of yours again. I pretend to be upset with him, playfully slapping his hand away with a giggle snort. Stop. Face can only take so much punishment. I gotta look my best tonight. You always look your best these days, Fang. There's a glow about you that can only mean one thing. Peers down at me, studying my face as, he, as I blink in confusion. You're in love, aren't you? Any attempt to deny it is already screwed before it gets out of the gate as a blush overtakes my face in an instant as I cover myself in my wings before stammering out a bunch of half-finished sentences. No. Maybe. Yes. And probably. Fuck. Yeah, I am, Dave. Am I really that bad at hiding it? He leans towards me, still grinning like an idiot. Yes, you are, Fang. But that's good! Claps his hand down on my shoulders, startling me. You've been a ghost here, Fang. I knew how bad you felt, but I couldn't do a thing to stop it. Whatever this is that's come in your life is exactly what you've been needing for so long. A warm smile graces my beak as I nod. You're right, Dave. It's exactly what I needed to pull me out of the funk. I'm sorry I've been so fucked lately. I haven't been in the right headspace in who knows how long. You haven't been for two years, Vang. He's right. It sucks, but he's absolutely right. Does my heart good to see like this? So full of hope. Not bad for my bottom line either. People are pouring through the doors this week. One that I've ever seen before Skin Row became the disaster it is now. I wanted to see you. And of course, to eat away their paychecks and pizza. Chuckles to himself before grabbing the pizza off the table, placing it on my lap. Eat up! You need your energy for to show the You need your energy for you need your energy for your show tonight. Taking a piece of the uh, edge, I take a bite. Taking a piece off the edge, I take a bite, savoring the taste of the freshly baked pizza. You definitely brought this from home. God, Dave, if people could have hear what you have, what you do at home, they never go anywhere else. Thank you. You're very welcome. Keep this up and I can actually afford that brick oven I've always wanted. And then who knows? Maybe I can change this whole place for the better. With that, he slaps me on uh, my back with pride before heading toward the kitchen to prepare goodness for all the people to come. I call to him just before he gets out the door. Dave, just... Thank you for everything you've done for me. <laughs> the father I wish I had when I grew up. He grips the edge of the doorframe, taking a moment to absorb what I said before slowly turning back to face me. Happy tear in his eye. It's been my pleasure, Fang. Would have loved to have you as my daughter. Silent moment passes uh, us before he smiles one more time and leaves. I meant what I said. He has been far more supportive of me than my dad has ever been. Not that I hate my father, but... It would have been nice to get something other than the cold shoulder and yelling when I was going through my phases. Dave hadn't been around. I don't think I would have lasted more than a year here. I grab another piece, taking time to enjoy the home-cooked crust and fresh ingredients as Benji and Jacob walk through the door. I smirk as I see their noses twitch as they catch the smell, almost floating across the floor to me. Caught your noses, did it, guys? Here, 
Have a slice. I hold out the plate to them as they each gingerly snag a piece. Their faces turn to pure bliss as the flavors hit their tongues. Holy crap. I love Dave's home cooking. Benji licks his fingers clean before slipping uh, his case off his back and setting against the wall. Jacob's face is too busy twitching for him to say anything as he stumbles over to those drums. Shake it off, guys. We've got a show to play soon. And only a little time to warm up. Flip the last piece into the air before snapping in one bite, wiping my hands off and grabbing my guitar. You got it, Fang. Benji grabs his bass, plugging it into the amp, and Jacob successfully navigates to his seat without smashing into a wall, giving a shaky thumbs up. And the music in the background this the music is in the back room this week. The music in the back room this week has been far more uplifting than the usual fare. My voice is still husky, years of smoking hasn't been kind, but there's a slightness to it all the same. Hopeful lyrics instead of the dismal ones I've been singing for years. Fire in my soul starting to burn a little more each day. Kitchen staff started pop, uh, propping the break room door open to listen one day, letting the music flow throughout the back of the pizzeria as they hammer away at dough. And now it's something else I look forward to. It feels great knowing that people who have to be here also want to listen to our music, even when they're in even when we're just warming up. Benji looks happier, too. Don't think he ever wanted to play the guitar. And the deep bass suits his style much better as his feathery tail swings with the beat. Showtime is coming up, so we take a break, wiping away sweat and rehydrating for a few minutes, not wanting to go up on stage looking a mess. Jacob brushes his hair back. Benji stretches his arms while shaking his feathers, flicking off sweat in every direction, and I run my hands over the light layer of hair on my head, once again marveling at the silken texture that's slowly returning. Stepping out on the stage is surreal. Not an empty seat in the house, my draw drops as I take in the sight. All of them look over at us as we finish setting our stuff, with not a bored eye in the crowd. It's fucking happening. It's really fucking happening. After all these years of playing for a bunch of dead souls, my heart long having left me, I'm getting my real chance I wanted four years ago. And on its dead center right in front, the smile is showing a sense of pride as he watches me step on stage. This beautiful tarot in her elements, surrounded by the crowd he helped create. I blow him a kiss, which he catches and slaps on his lips. After getting everything set to go, I step up to the mic, taking a moment to draw him a deep breath. This is everything I've been hoping for. I need only keep going and show the world how good I truly am. I hear Benji whisper behind me. Shit, Fang. I need more merch. I have to stifle a laugh as I introduce the band to cheers I've never heard before. As we play our set, the crowd is into it the entire time. Following my energy on stage as I flow from song to song, my voice holding strong as dazzling tones pour from my snow. They're captivated. Many have been here for years, barely giving me a passing glance, but now that my spark has returned, I can't believe what they're hearing. This has to be someone different, I bet they thought. And they're fucking right. This is the real me. The young woman with fire in her spirit. A song to sing to whatever audience will listen. As the set comes to a close, I end up with one final flourish across my guitar, and what follows sets my soul ablaze. Cheers erupting from every seat, clapping echoing from every corner, and Anna whistling as he stands up first, looking right into my eyes. It takes all my willpower to hold my composure as I bow to the crowd, waving to them as I sniffle back joyful tears. It lasts for a good minute before they finally quiet down long enough for me to speak. Thank you, everyone. Glad you enjoyed the set. You've been the best crowd I've had, I've ever had, and can't wait to see you guys next time. Merch, as always, is by the door. Thank you, and good night. I wave one last time, getting a few more cheers as I sling my guitar over my shoulder. I watch as they start to head home, and on hurrying over to the man, over to man the merch desk, CDs and shirts flying off the shelves until a scant few things remain on the racks. It's more than I can take as I cover my beak with my, both my hands, happy sobs breaking out of me as Benji walks up and puts a hand on my shoulder. This is what I always knew you could do, Fang. I look over to him, his eyes glistening in the bright, uh, bright stage lights. We're on the way up. 
Nothing could stop us now. Not with you doing what you're born to do. Playing the guitar like a fucking master. I choked back a few sobs, looking over at the near-empty racks. They fucking love us, Benji. Before we could barely sell a CD in a month if we were lucky. And they just cleared out the whole fucking table. He laughs as he gives my shoulder a squeeze. <laughs> we're gonna have to get our asses online at this rate. Guess we better put in a new order for some more merch. Unless we're working for pennies. <clears throat> Let's see. I think this is Anna. I'll get on as soon as I get home tonight. Don't worry about it. I see Anon counting up the till, clipping bills into three separate bundles as he slaps the cash box closed and walks over to us. 600 bucks even, dudes. Profit. Already took out what you'll need to restock. Here you go. He hands, us, he hands out the three bundles, one to each of us, before setting the box down on the speaker. As all three of us stare at the cash in our hands, stars light up in our eyes. This was just one show, in the middle of Skin Row with an audience of people who barely have cash to scrape together for rent, let alone anything fun, and they nearly cleared out the racks. We look at each other before the joy takes hold as we all hug, bouncing in place and cheering. We're a real fucking band, guys! I shout as I salt my boots against the stage. The energy is infectious as Anon walks up and I pull him into a huddle. He is a part of this all the same as the rest of us, and deserves a share in the moment. After a minute of bouncing around like a bunch of idiots, we calm down, all collectively catching our breath. Jacob speaks for the first time since we got out here, stuffing the stack of bills in his pocket. Holy shit, I get to eat something fresh for once instead of whatever is left over in the heating dish. Benji is flipping through the bills, licking his fingers as he counts. Might be able to get me a bike so I don't gotta run here all the fucking time. I can at least fit that in the back so no one steals it. And... I can buy some real damn barbecue sauce in the good nuggies. They all collectively give me a look as my face grows pink. What? I love my nuggies and I haven't got the good shit in months. I huff as I shove the stack into my shirt. They all break out in the laughter as we take down the stage. Work goes by a lot quicker when we're happy with our work instead of constantly disappointed. It was the biggest crowd we'd ever had. I'm not sure if we could have fit anyone else in here and still had room for customers to eat. Benji and Jacob were quick to head home, not wanting to have a stack of cash in hand in the seediest place in town. And in the end, it was just Anon, Dave, and me. Dave locks up before hugging me and giving Anon a look up and down. Fear in Anon's eyes as Dave measures him up. Flashes a toothy grin at Anon before slapping him on the back, really knocking him off his feet before heading home. Anon rubs his back from the devastating pat of approval. Holy fuck. I think he knocked a disc loose. I snicker as I rub his back, and he sighs with relief. I mean, you could have done a lot worse if you saw something you didn't like, so count yourself lucky. No joke. Dude's got an arm for dude's got arms for days. Well, let's get out of here before we lose the rest of the sun with you having a stack in your chest. Anyone re reaching down there will never see their hand again. Maybe not everyone. I flutter my eyelashes at him with a smirk, absolutely demolishing the dweeb as he tries to prevent his brain leaking out of his ears. They're gonna kill me one day for blood loss. He wipes his nose with a napkin, a tiny red splotch soaking through. You'll survive. Maybe. <laughs> I'm never gonna give you a break, by the way. I take his hand in mine and pull him alongside me. It'll be a good way to die. <laughs> He flits a napkin into the trash as we head toward my apartment. I don't care about the depressing sights on the way home anymore. I know this place won't hold me for much longer. My band is taking off with my hard work, and energy and Anon's seemingly endless ability to spread the word. It's just a month. In just a month, both of us have begun to turn the whole thing around. Every day we're making a profit, our merch no longer just hanging on the shelves, forever ignored. As we get close to my home, I stop him. Anon turns to face me with a confused look. What's up, Fang? Something on your mind? I grip his arm in mine, turning my face up to his. Anon, I've been thinking. My lease is almost up, and saving money is important if we ever want to get out of here, so... The hopeful look in his face is too cute for words. Can I 
move in with you? It doesn't take long for his face to go through a whirlwind of emotions as what I'm asking him bashes right into his adorable face. Spend every night with you and never sleep alone again? Let me think about it for literally no seconds. Of fucking course you can, Fang. He pulls me into a hug, squeezing me a bit too tight in his excitement. And on my lungs, please. I croak out as I feel my ribs trying to readjust themselves on my chest. Oops. Shit, sorry. He releases the vice grip as I take a deep or a sharp breath. My vision slowly filling back in as air returns to my lungs. It's <laughs> okay. Just remember you were the lanky fuck you were back in school. Catching my breath takes more effort than I expected. Jesus, he could have snapped me in half if he wanted to. But, um, clears his throat with a sheepish laugh. Yeah, be awesome to have you at home, Fang. I need to do some serious cleaning first. Just don't let me find any weird looking tissues and we're good. Another seal pops loose in his nose as he holds his hand over it. I shake my head at him with a playful smirk, grabbing his arm and pulling him along. Come on, let's go inside. It's fucking cold out here. The walk up the stairs leading to my apartment takes us a little longer as we refuse to separate from each other. We walk up the steps side by side until we reach the door where I fish the keys out of my pocket before unlocking it, and on pushing it open with his free hand. I won't be sad to say goodbye to this place. Maybe home, but it holds so many bad memories. The marks hiding behind the posters that cover my walls are moments I will enjoy forgetting. Back when I had so little to live for. A new life to live. Away from here. We break away from one another, with me shutting and locking the door and him lounging on the couch. I look over at him, the amber in my eyes having that old gleam back in them. Take the cash out of my shirt, setting it on the counter before walking over to him. He looks up at me as I gaze down at him, the fading sunlight illuminating my body. My health has returned to me. I fill out my clothes again, and the bags under my eyes that used to never fade have disappeared. My wings look as pristine and beautiful as they had so long ago. Every feather back in place. Hair is growing out. A little over two inches now sitting on, upon my head. And sitting below me is the cause. My dweeb. My new oasis in my sea of regret. Emotions start to overwhelm me as I gaze into his eyes. I never knew I could feel this again. The love in my heart that had died so violently years ago, but never truly disappeared. I tried to kill it, thinking that burning him out of my whole life would have made me happy. But it spiraled me down even further. That night was a mistake we both regretted. Our lives had taken dark turns as a result, and we both would have ended up in early graves if we hadn't found each other again. I need to feel something different tonight. Something more. I need to show him exactly how I feel. My eyes half close as I stare into his, the sunlight slowly fading as the dim light of the streets takes its place. Slowly lowering myself, I sit down beside him, reminiscent of the time he had fallen down the steps when I tend to do his injuries. The day we both admitted to each other how much we liked each other. Like that turned to love. Seeing it as as now. He stares back into my eyes, a dusting of red across his cheeks, the amber in my eyes reflecting as the dim light touches my face. There are no words that need to be said as I gently lower my face to his, putting a hand behind his head and bringing his lips to my beak. I can taste his lips pressing against mine as I hold him tight. Anon leans up and pushes against my body, a hand resting on my waist and pulling me closer. We explore each other's mouths, an easier task for me than it has ever will be for him, as my lithe tongue can reach further than his. Not that he seems to mind. Appears only to entice him further as he presses hard against my lips. A few soft moans escape from me as we show our love, both his hands holding my waist now as I keep his head locked tightly in my grip. After a minute, I break our kiss, pulling back from him, panting to catch my breath, my cheeks long since turned bright red. He stares back, a glint in his eyes, not a lust, but a love, a love lost, now found. That warms both our hearts. My arms hang over his shoulders as I lean in close to him, pulling him against me. 
My wings wrap around behind him as I kiss him again, barely giving him much time to recover as I press hard against his chest. I didn't think I'd ever be able to love someone like this again, and I honestly can't see myself with anyone else but him. Even after all we went through, I never looked at another person the same way since. After tonight, I'll never need to. I have him now. His hands run up my sides and up my back, settling just under my wings, keeping me as close as possible to him. Another couple minutes pass in our passionate embrace, all the fire within me seeming to burn ever brighter as time seems to slow down. I break away from our kiss again, looking deep into his eyes, one moment passing to another until I can finally speak. I love you, Anna, so very much. He brushes his hand through my hair, smiling as it shimmers under the fresh moonlight now pouring through the window. I love you too, Fang. More than I could ever express. Then let me do something. Let me, uh, bleh. Then let me do it for you. I pull him back to my lips, caressing the back of his head as he grabs at my waist to hold on for dear life as I nearly rip the air from his lungs. Gently releasing him from my grip as we part, I stand up from the couch leaving a slightly confused animal below me. Ugh. Fang, did, did I? I press a finger against his lips. Shh, dweeb. I didn't do anything wrong. I toss aside my shirt and buckle my jeans, leaving him nearly catatonic upon the couch as he comes to grips with the situation, unfolding in front of his eyes. I straddle his lap in my black underwear, sharing a loving gaze with a smile on my lips. And um, I guess we I should apologize. For what? Stammers out a response, trying desperately not to crumble in a pile of dust under me. I lean down close to his face and whisper into his ear. You aren't really going to be getting much sleep tonight. Oh. Holy shit. End chapter 7. And then they fucked. And then they fucked. Oh, there it was. <laughs> Salute Anna on the end. Died of snoo snoo. All right, let's take a look at chat. Bonds describes it with some soft flowery language. Anna will prune Fang for the next thing minutes. Dave cannot afford oven. Can afford paying a band to play there for a whole week. What kind of financial situation is the man in? It's not that he can't afford an oven. It's that he can't afford a pizza oven. Like a nice big brick oven. And... You know, that's not too crazy, I suppose. Those things are not fucking cheap, especially if you want a good one. How important is the crust on a pizza? I've had one with decent enough cheese and sauce, but the crust is kind of dragging it down. I think the crust is very important on a pizza. Because, like, when you're eating a pizza, it's the last thing you get to. You don't want to end off on, like, a fucking sour note. You want something good. You want to have something that you eat the whole way through. I know some people won't eat the crust regardless, but I've... Uh, I'm going to be honest, I consider them kind of heathens. Uh, my own take. But uh, yeah, I feel like the crust is really important. If you get a good crust on a good pizza, it accelerates that, or it just raises all of that way higher. If it's a bad crust on a good pizza, you, you kind of you go, nah, okay, I guess I'll eat it. At a place that sees the crust, it would end up being a good breadstick after you eat the initial pizza part. Nice to tend to skip the big crusts because they are always so dry. Thin is fine though. But I mean, it's like a base of a pizza that you put on the sauce and cheese on. Oh, okay. You mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I guess I'd say pretty important. Bad crust can really drag the pizza down. Well, yeah, it's like, it, it's the foundation for the whole pizza, right? I like a nice, like, cr like crust that's got a, a little bit of a crisp to it, you know? Not like, I'm like, whenever I bite into it, but like, you know, a not, it, it doesn't have like the give of like a chewy pizza there's just a little bit of resistance nothing could stop us now oh no they said it again mm, i explained the one i got today felt more lacking than other meh pizzas i've tried premium nuggies yeah, a lot of meh, uh, meh pizza have okay crust that doesn't really help or hurt whereas some good pizzas have crappy crust yeah and that drags the whole experience down god we've gone from uh thirsty to hungry well we were at the pizzeria and I mean, my ass was talking about earlier how I was just going to go reheat pizza after dinner to eat something because I hungry. Are there any good dino nuggets out there? 
Let's take a look real quick. I'm just going to type dino nuggets. We got we got uh, yummy dino buddies. Here, here we go. We got, we got uh, discover kid friendly uh, favorites that pack a nutritional punch. Uh, yeah, yeah, fucking organic, dinosaur shaped, meatless, plant based, whole grain, chicken and veggie, alphabet shaped, alphabet shaped. What? Huh? How does that work? That's not dino nuggies. That's that's letter nuggies. Fuck this. I'm mad now. <laughs> Imagine Anon hugged Fang too hard at the end. Whoops. Could have been that way if if it was Fang from the beginning of the story, all twiggy and shit. On top of that, is there a good barbecue sauce that goes with them? I don't know. I don't use a lot of sauce on my stuff. I, so like, I, I feel like there's two different types of people when it comes to like sauces or dips. You've got the people who will like just dip the whole fucking thing all the way in. Like cover the entire thing and then eat it. I'm the kind of guy who does like a little bit of a dip. So that way you get the taste, but it's not like it overpowering. It's not the only thing you're tasting. I, I, I usually whenever they have a dip, unless it's like some cheese dip, I'll, um, there will be like a a, a a decent bit remaining still. I'm not an aggressive dipper. I also don't coat my shit too often. I like to try and keep some semblance of balance in the flavor profile. Just the two of us. Oh, Zam. Yeah, that was. I assume that was in relation to them uh, actually just straight up boning at the end of that chapter. Fang calls Anne on her dweeb. M mommy. It's more tasteful than I expected. Good. They knew when to pull the pull back. We got back here. Welcome back. <laughs> Alright, but get me one that has Olivia and Fang on it. As the nugget mascots. We'll just grab like uh some of their sprites and just fucking lazily paste it on the on the front. It'll be easy peasy. They'll sell in minutes. Had those ones, lots of shapes. Not bad and cheaper than some others I saw. I wonder what like primo dino nuggies would be. What if I type prem what about premium chicken nuggets? Cause I mean, it, 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 at the end of the day, we just come down to shaping it, right? What is the best nuggets? If you want the platonic ideal of a chicken nugget, look no further than Tyson chicken nuggets. Okay. All right, then we got Chick-fil-A. But like, okay, so there's Tyson premium selects. I need my artisan chicken nuggets now. <laughs> Waiter, ding, 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 ding. Where are my dino nuggies? For me, it's pretty much exclusively ranch or honey mustard for chicken nuggets. Am I gonna get like, am I gonna get crucified if I say I just eat my chicken, my, my like, it, it, like, the last time I had chicken nuggets was from fucking like Chick-fil-A, I think. Cause there was one on campus back in uh back when I was in E old uni. Um I just ate those shit plain. I didn't use anything to dip them in. Am I getting arrested for that? I feel like I am. Handmade dino nuggies. You know what, guys? I've thought about doing a cooking stream before. Because, I mean, hey, that's a funny idea. The first cooking stream that we'll do, we'll make some handmade dino nuggies. <laughs> it'll be the dino nuggie stream. And we'll even try and make one that looks like Fang. And it'll come out looking horrendous. <laughs> and I'll sit there for a moment, head in my hands, and be like, why did I even try this? <clears throat> 
dash of gold glitter boom premium nuggies dude i hate the fucking practice of putting like gold leaf on food it's like well you're fucking you're just dressing it up that doesn't mean it's better it just means it's gonna be more expensive give me like a nice fucking like give me something that tastes beautiful i'll be all over that give me something that tastes meh and put some gold on it i'm gonna fucking hurt you you're gonna piss me off tyson's good we get their chicken strips It's been a while. It's actually been a while since I've had like chicken strips or chicken nuggets. Like any time that the opportunity would present itself, I'm always just ordering something different. Anon's brain. Been in the navy. I've been in the navy for three years. I only know how to sleep with men. I don't know how to sleep with a woman. This is so weird. <laughs> I'm used to semen. <laughs> I only really like barbecue sauce. I don't even like ketchup or mustard. And that's only for chicken. I don't... Yeah, I don't use ketchup, mustard, mayo, anything like that. Um, If I have to think about... Like, I'll use barbecue sauce for, like, you know, meals that make sense with... Like, you know, barbecue. Um, Like, sometimes my... Like, uh, my dad will put some, like, sauce on something. It's like a marinade and all that. But, like, that's not, like... That's not like you get the food and you put some more sauce on top. That's like, that's part of the cooking process. So that's a bit different, right? Um, glazes. I like those, but that's not really a condiment. Is it like a, like a fucking a whiskey bourbon glaze on like a nice piece of salmon is usually pretty good. Um, oh, whenever I have stir fry, I'll get like some yum yum sauce. Just drizzle that on top and then mix it together. I like the taste of it. It makes it. Gets it, it gives me something a little bit more to work with with like the rice as well, which I'm all about. Uh, is there anything else that I use condiments on? I mean, the only thing I can think that I add to anything else off the top of my head, at least, uh, burgers, uh, the place that me and my brother get uh, food from. Uh, it's like a like a local place and it's really fucking good. Uh, I'll put like a I'll order like some truffle aioli. I'll put that on top. Um, and recently I've taken to they have an option to put some peanut butter on it. And peanut butter on the burger actually kind of fucking slaps. I'm not gonna lie. Any brand recommendations for that sauce? Vanderstein barbecue sauce recommendation go. Cooking stream would be pog <laughs> in the navy. Cooking stream. All right, <laughs> making fang shaped nuggies near the end of stream. Somehow I made Mia and Ben shaped nugget. We would we would make like a Mi like a fucking Mia nugget and then we would set it in front of the camera. Nothing else, right? It would just be like an overhead shot of the table. You'd see the Mia nugget and it looked really good and it looks really great. And then I'd take a hammer and just. It would explode. <laughs> what, I heard my name, huh? Twisted wants barbecue sauce recommendations. <laughs> I don't know my barbecue sauces. At least I think that's what Tristan, Twisted wanted. Fish good on pizza. Are we talking like sardines? Or just like any kind of fish? I mean, like, here's the thing. I've never had fish on pizza. So I can't attest to it, right? Whether or not it's good or not. I would be willing to try it. I mean, I've heard people say that, like, the saltiness of, like, a fucking sardine on pizza is pretty good. So, like, if it was offered to me, I would give it a bite and see if I like it. I don't think it's something I'd order out of out of the blue, though, to be honest. Just one of those things that I'm like, eh, I don't know. Could work, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to pull the trigger on that one. Don't limit yourself to Fang. Make Reed Trigga Stella. We don't even call we don't even call her Trish anymore. It's just Trigga. <laughs> Set your shapes too. I'd have to get real artisan with it. Really, really work that shit out. Honestly, that could be pretty fun. Maybe, maybe I'll look into like how much work that would be at some point. Because, like I've said before. 
I may have like started streaming with games and everything, but I'm not exactly opposed to doing some different stuff as well. It's fun to, I mean, this is kind of a variety channel if I'm honest. So going out there and uh, fucking cooking up some fucking Primo Nuggies, that could be funny. That could be a good stream. Though that would probably be like, I was going to say a midday stream, but late night Nuggies don't sound bad either, huh? Tries to make Mia nugget, just makes little gator Mia. Oh, I'm gonna have to play that soon so that way I can I, I can understand some of this. Barbecue sauce recommendations. I mean Chick-fil-A is very good, but also fuck that company. Uh, I generally use sweet baby rays. I've heard that one's pretty good. Gotta earn her name back. Not like a connoisseur. Comparatively to, like, I guess the rest of us, you're more of a connoisseur. <sighs> Me and Ben shaped nuggets aren't separate. They fuse together into some malformed shape. The Malcolm. They finally tried to do the fusion dance. <laughs> Didn't turn out too well. Olivia has anchovies on pizza and makes her negative 10 out of 10 wood push downstairs. Wonko spotted. Mods. Cut his peepee -pee off. It's a long climb from hell, sir. So her name is going to be a while yet. <laughs> the only thing I can really call myself a connoisseur on is NSFW games. A coomer sewer, if you will. Any good ones that have gameplay? Yeah, you know what? You can't, you can't like, you can't come out swinging with that without throwing out at least one or two games that are apparently top shelf. I don't know when Steam started to do it, but like at some point they just decided to fucking mask off and just start recommending me like fucking NSFW games, just like out of the blue. Like, and it wasn't even, like, I started, like, clicking on NSFW games. It was, like, one day I just started to notice, like, in, like, the, the eight games that they'll show you on, like, a list or whatever, at least one or two of them would be NSFW. And I'm like, what? Huh? And it wasn't just me. Like, it would be one thing if it was just me. I would, I would, at that point, I'd have to be like, okay, well, maybe, maybe I did something, right? But, like, my brother like all my friends we all observe the same thing where they just started to show up and you're like what oh okay and then didn't recently like steam make it so you could buy a game privately and not have it on your profile so like they kind of they kind of like leaned into it didn't they we can make a mia shaped nugget but purposely leave it cooking in the cooking oil burning it beyond burnt <laughs> This is your this is your payment for being a hyper bitch. You will cook. <laughs> Thing would definitely get meat lovers. Remember the rock from a cow comment? That's it's very true. Yeah, last sovereign. Is easily one of the best RPGs ever created. Then Fen Fen Fenoxo stuff is good. Both trials and tainted space and corruption of champions. See, the last sovereign doesn't sound like it would be an NSFW game, but trials and tainted space and corruption of champions too definitely sound like they would be. <laughs> and canonically loves meat, uh, loves meat lovers. I think I said what the pizza I had before is. Let me let me pull it up. It's it's the one I have in the fridge right now, and it's the one I typically get from the place that I order from. Uh oh, I gotta see. Hold up. Uh, okay, I'm good now. Okay, where's the menu? Here it is. Do, 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 do. Scroll over here. Merry Prankster. Here we go. Herb aioli base, chicken, Italian sausage, garlic, roasted red peppers, green bell peppers, mozzarella, Wisconsin, Wisconsin aged white cheddar, and herb aioli drizzle. That shit goes hard. Love that shit. Make me, make me very happy whenever I get to have a slice of that shit. There's also some other pretty good ones too that uh, I've had in the past, like um, a mushroom kind of pizza with some uh, some onions on it. Really good, really good. 
my brother, of course, just gets a fucking regular pepperoni pizza from there. And I'm always like, you sure you don't want anything else? Okay. You just want the pepperoni pizza. You will consume the naughty games, Mr. Streamer. You will show full ass on stream. Straight to the band dimension with you. You prefer visual novels, kinetic novels, essentially no choices, just movies moving forward, or actual games. Couldn't find the Yakuza games without turning off the adult content filter. Real shit? Huh. I wonder what... I mean, you would think it would just be like porn games that would get filtered out by adult filter, but I wonder what all the criteria is for it. Is that why the names are that way? Games, but if the smut is good enough. Yeah, tits and cock too. Trials in tainted space. Corruption of champions. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it kind of hit me the same way that Incognito did. Oh, fuck me. Played Hoonie Pop. That was fun. Good humor. I feel like everybody either played Hoonie Pop or at least saw somebody play Hoonie Pop. I think popped off pretty hard. We saw you playing Snoot and Wani here. Have these NSF Dino Furry games. No, we will not give you reasons why this makes sense. You will consume. You are a consumer. Take it now. There's also debauchery in Kalia Kingdom. Which is definitely inspired by them. Dick. Oh boy. I'm upset it's not called Corruption of Champions Kingdom. There's multiple filters. 2D or 3D. I mean, Markiplier rep recorded Hoonie Pop 1 and 2 in Hoonie Cam Studio. He certainly did, and I think that's how I... I think that's how I digested the game. 2D is more ref is usually more refined and less uncanny. If you got good 3D, I'll hear it. Corruption of Champions 2. I think I think I've got that somewhere, bro. I, <laughs> I feel like I I, I question Vanderstein's power level, and then I just got like blown away. It was like a nuclear blast. My face just like flapping from the wind, the pure force of it. If you can tolerate some questionable game design choices. Cock one is pretty good as well. Man, <laughs> I didn't know I was surrounded by such cultured individuals. I'm sitting over here like, I played uh, fucking Meet and Fuck Kingdom back in the day. <laughs> that a compliment? I, I just didn't, ex I, I like, you know, I, I didn't know where this conversation was gonna go. I didn't realize everybody was like, yo, wait a minute. <laughs> Corruption of King or corruption of uh, champions. That shit slaps. <laughs> I I apparently I, I I guess I need to go out there and like fucking do my research or something. Shit. People who play Sims Four and play quote unquote Sims Four. I put you in the pool. I delete a ladder. You literally played Snoot Game and you were surprised to be surrounded by cultured individuals. I just... I, look, I didn't realize how... Like, th that there was, like, some really big players here. That's all. I'm just sitting here like, oh. Okay. It seems like everybody here knows these names. <laughs> I, I've never heard of it. Okay. I, I, I guess... I guess I guess this is on me. Tried a few. Just want to know if... We've finally blended gameplay and smut well enough yet. I mean, the website F95 Zone is a collection of basically all NSFW games. I'd use that. I have never heard of that before. I, I'm going to go check it out after stream because I'm curious what the... F like, I feel like I've been pointed towards the forbidden archives <laughs> i'd be stupid not to at least take a look i I'm, i mean i probably won't pick up the necronomicon but i'll be like yo <laughs> that shit's the necronomicon 
That's crazy. Okay. My very own Lith is cute. We all know some of us just had our power level. I just, I, I guess I'm not privy to a lot of NSFW games. Like, I, that's just where I'm at, I suppose. The snooting protocol. Chat is getting hella saucy. Chat is, again, again, I, I, and I have to emphasize this so much. We started off stream with say with someone saying that they edged to my fang voice. <laughs> At this point, we're just. This is more, this is more, uh, structured, right? This is like a bunch of uh, scholars sitting around talking about their, their, uh, their, art, their, their scholarly articles being like, mm, yes, quite. Um, well, have you taken a look at this one? And that one, they just proved the theory, <laughs> you know, this is, this is the gentleman's club now. <laughs> just way too salty. Need to finish building my PC, get ultra settings, settings on some stuff. I'm not cultured in the way of NSFW games. I'm too busy staring at funny map games. I just do whatever makes my brain go burn. And that's usually like fucking character action. That shit's fun as fuck. Or like, I don't know, playing Minecraft in VR in a horror mod pack. That was kind of fun when I did that shit. Thirsty to hungry to thirsty. The cycle of chat. Well, when you when you drink something, you realize that you were a little hungry, so you have to go grab yourself a snack. But then you realize after you grabbed yourself a snack that you need something to wash it down, so it's back to the thirst. And then it's just a self-feeding loop. Verlon Lith is about a cat boy cat that gets sent to this white space, and you create an avatar to interact with them. Goal is to get close and try and help them. Sweet and spicy. For cock two and tits, it's they are mainly reading Sims with combat, along with character art and some full CGs. <clears throat> Holy shit, we're three hours in and I literally have only done two fucking chapters. I'm gonna I'm gonna off myself. <laughs> what the fuck? This bitch is gonna make zero progress this stream and he'll fucking like it. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Alright. <laughs> That's it. I think I'm going to try and <laughs> we'll try and at least get to chapter 10. Maybe we won't get to fucking maybe we won't finish it, but like shit, at least let's try and get there. <laughs> oh boy, you guys can keep recommending some uh some some sauce in the chat by all means. Don't let me stop you. Maybe some of the text on screen and damn. Cock 2 had a very cute pink cat girl. All right, <laughs> with that, we're going to start chapter eight, Morning Glow. <clears throat> my eyes slowly open up as a tired yawn escapes my snout. Anon is still out cold. It's not surprising since I didn't give him much time to rest. Not that he'll be complaining at all, I'm sure. Stealthily remove myself from his arms and the covers. I pick up the scattered clothes off the floor. I guess it's laundry, Dave. So, holy fuck, it's cold in here. Walking around naked isn't the best idea on a winter day with how fucking drafty this place is. I'm shaking like a leaf as I gather up the last of the clothes when I hear a stirring from the couch. He rolls over, eyes barely open, taking the sight of me in a bundle of clothes in hand. Not a stitch on me. A discerning nod and a shitting grin later. He gives me a thumbs up. Nice. Shut the fuck up, sweep. I'm freezing out here. I flip him the bird while hurrying over to the clean clothes pile, dropping the dirty clothes to the side and putting on a fresh set before I turn into a popsicle. I can hear his disappointed aw from behind me, earning himself yet another flip of the bird. Not like it's going to be the only time you see me wandering around naked, so calm it with the bitching. That gets his attention as his face flushes and he gives a shaky nod of approval. I'm going to head down and start up some laundry. Pa's getting massive. Taking yours with me. The heck am I gonna wear while I wait? Pulls the blanket around him tighter, turning into a makeshift burrito. <laughs> that, obviously? Your clothes smell like cheap booze and cigarette butts. Need a wash even more than mine. Just sit there. Text me if you're bored. I'll be back in an hour. A final whine and shuffling the blanket are the last noises I hear as I put my boots on and grab a pile of quarters off the counter. The laundry room is the same disaster it always has been. 
with forgotten clothes piled up in the corner from people who put their shirt their shit in and left it or died before they ever got back to pick it up another unfortunate reminder of how terrible this place really is i pile the clothes in the washer flick a detergent pot into the top and slam it shut the jingling of a few quarters down its gaping maw and it roars to life i don't dare leave while it's running you do that and you'll come back to either no clothes or them joining the graveyard in the corner I lean against the wall, flipping through my phone, checking texts from the band. Jacob sent me a picture of him holding one of the fancy frozen pizzas with the biggest dopey grin on his face. Benji is proudly standing next to a street bike. No more long-ass runs for him every day. Seeing them both so happy only reaffirms the feeling in my heart that we're going to make it, in one way or another. Our band is on the rise, and it won't be long till people start noticing me on the street. Though, hopefully not here. I do not need to get shanked on the way home because people start thinking I've got money to burn. This place devours dreams. Desperate aura emanating it, clawing down anyone who might make it out. I can't let that happen to us. The spin cycle is my only companion down here in this dank room. The place smells like rust and stagnant water. Surprising the machines even work anymore. Nothing else is really maintained except them building manager would be buried in complaints if he let them stay broken for more than a day. My phone rings in my hand. It's Anna. Uh, so cold. You'll live. Only be a little while longer. Just turn on the TV. Plenty of garbage to watch on a Saturday morning. Ooh. wonder if they got anime reruns on right now. What? What? <laughs> Whatever, dweeb. Just be patient. Hanging up and stuffing my phone back into my pocket, I tap my boot on the concrete floor. The slow beat grows until my ter- tail starts to swing to it, humming as I close my eyes. I tilt my head side to side until the ping of the washer snaps me out of my trance. Hurling them into the dryer, I go back to my own personal concert. Dreams in my head of standing up on stage in the stadium to an audience of thousands. A confident grin on my face as I imagine them all shouting and cheering singing our songs back to us. It's more than a dream. It's a possibility. When I intend to make real. With laundry done, I hop upstairs and toss Alan's clothes at him. He swiftly throws them on a sigh of relief, the fresh heat of the dryer warming his bones. Ugh. That is so much fucking better. Thanks, Fang. At least I could do after not letting you sleep. I'm not even remotely complaining about that. Of course you aren't. You'd be an idiot if you did. I smirk at him, kissing him on the cheek as I settle in beside him. So, about moving in together. He looks around my apartment, measuring things with his hand and rubbing his chin. Yeah, we could make it work. Might need to Tetris a few of your boxes, but I've got wall space for your instruments. What about this couch, though? It's not coming with. We can hug in an alley and be done with it. Oh, don't want to take it and any good memories shared on it. I cock an eyebrow at him with my lips pursed. Anna, this couch has been trying to poke a hole in my ass since I got it. Only reason I kept it is because I'm too fucking poor to buy another one. It's going to die in the street where it belongs. I can see disappointment in his eyes as he pats the armrest. You served us well, little couch. I wrap a ring, I wrap a wing around him and pull him close to me, whispering in his ear. Don't worry, we can make plenty of new memories at your place. With that, I can almost swear he's about to fling the fucking couch out the window. Out with the old and in with the new. The new being a twin-sized mattress with a hole in it, but still new. I stare at him in disbelief. How how the hell did you put a hole in your new mattress? My voice is laced with concern. Hoping there has to be a good explanation for it. He shrugs. Tried to make a better railgun using my experience from the Navy and it exploded. Took out a corner and half a box of cigarettes. My pupils shrink in shock as my jaw hangs open. What? The how the fuck what? You know what? Fuck it. Just don't do any more of that crap when I'm nearby. I don't need any new burns. He shakes his head, waving his hand dismissively with a smirk. Don't worry about it, Fang. I may be an idiot, but I'm not so dumb as to try that twice. Unless, if I had some gold-plated connectors. Just, no, Anon, please no trying to blow yourself to bits. I don't need to spend my life piecing you back together every night. 
Fine. I'll behave. Mostly. What have I gotten myself into? I cover my face with my hands, shaking my head with a sigh. Oh well. I know what I signed up for when I took him back into my life. Even with the potential of him trying to blow himself up on the regular, can't deny the results from his work. Without him, I would have taken ages to get where we are currently after just a month. So... He breaks the silence that has settled over us while I'm mulling through my thoughts. When are you moving in? I drop my hands to my sides, leaning back and staring at the ceiling. Well, I gotta be out in a couple of weeks, so probably like right the fuck now? <laughs> Let's get packing. He stammers for a bit before I grab him by the arm and hand him a few spare boxes and trash bags. Not that I have much to move. What I brought with me being all I really ever had, except for when shit broke down too much to be used. He stuffs all my clothes in a bag while I gather up my bass and guitar, tightly locking them in their cases for the trip. All in all, it only takes an hour to gather my meager possessions from the cabinets and bathroom while tossing the couch to the curb. I look at the small pile with a somber frown on my face. Anon takes notice immediately as he comes over beside me. What's wrong, Fang? I sigh wistfully, my eyes still focusing on the small pile. It's just... I was here for ages. For four years. Four y long years trying to make something of myself. And I'm leaving here with next to nothing new. Guess I never really did anything at all that whole time. He turns to face me. He turns me to face him as he pulls me into a hug. My arms wrapping around his back as I bury my face in his sweater. You survived, Fang. So many people come here and the only thing they do is leave behind a chalk outline. Gently he places a finger under my beak, tilting my face up to his. Don't put yourself down. Not when you're about to be the most famous band in all of Alcadera Bluffs. A cheerful smile slowly forms on my lips as I peer into his eyes. You're right, Anon. I'll leave all this behind me and get to fucking work. Volcadero won't know what hit him when I get on that stage. He grins down at me. Damn right they won't. Come on, let's get your stuff out of here. I grab my cases as he slings the two bags over his shoulder and grabs a box in his hands as I take one last look around. This was my home for a long... For so long. My prison and almost my grave at the end. But now I get to leave it all behind me with only my dreams to look forward to. With a hopeful sigh, I lock the door for the last time, dropping the key off at the manager's office as we leave the building. The walk to his home is quiet. I'm in my own mind, thinking about all the time I spent there. Now, when I first arrived, I had little hope. I had a little hope. Not much, but something that kept me going. Years slowly chipped at away, until nothing but an apathetic void filled my heart. Each day bled into the next until finally I gave up. I turned my body into a tapestry of sorrow with every tattoo, shaving myself bald, which I admit I now regret, but at least it's growing back. I'm keeping the tattoos, though. I can't let myself forget how close I came to hitting bottom. My boots crush dead leaves and newspapers as I look ahead of me. Anon's leading the way, confident strides as he effortlessly carries my belongings. For all the bad that happened to him, Maybe he has done him at least a few favors. A soft smile lingers on my lips as I watch him. No matter what happens now, or how hard we have to work to get where we're going, I have him. always miss the years we lost, but we have a future now. Something to look forward to. A few more blocks and we arrive. The familiar neighborhood brings back good memories of the short few days we spent together here. My only wish is that we would have had more. He leads me up the stairs, the banisters barely held together with duct tape and wood glue. He wasn't joking. This place really has gone to hell. He fishes the keys out of his pocket and opens the door, letting me step in first. Welcome to my tiny corner of this terrible place called Skin Row. He puts my stuff down in the corner, slinging the bags on top of each other before turning back to me and gesturing toward the wall. You can put your guitar and bass over there. I'll put up some stands on the wall later. I lean them both against the wall, taking a seat on the bed as I observe what has to be home for the foreseeable future. It looks better than my place by a lot. 
No dents in the walls, no old stains coating the paint, and the floor isn't covered in tissues. Not that I had given him any time to clean. In a flash, he tosses piles of takeout food containers and beer cans into bags and hurls them out the window, landing with a thud in the dumpsters below. I wasn't expecting you to literally move the day after you asked, but what can you do? He shrugs as he throws another bag out the window. It just felt like there was no time like the present to get my ass moving. Didn't want to be there anymore. It was getting too depressing. Takes a seat next to me, wrapping an arm around my shoulder as I lean against him. I get it. Trust me. Not like I was happy ending up back here. Reminded me of high school and how I fucked up. Losing everything that mattered and how many months I spent in here moping before finally shipping my ass off to the Navy. But with you back... A hand on my cheek, turning my face towards his before giving me a kiss. Now, this place can be our place, our palace, until the day we leave this shithole. A tiny hint of blush fills my face with warmth as I smile at him. You're right. Our little shelter in the storm until I make it big and we can do whatever the hell we want. Damn right. Oh, yeah, I got something to show you. Clamors up off the bed before tripping and slamming to the floor. I wince as he staggers back up to his feet with a thumbs up. I'm okay. He walks over to his table and pulls a tube off it before unscrewing and unfurling the poster inside. My mouth drops open as I take in the sight. It's a beautifully rendered picture of me. Stars glittering around, my, band, my guitar in hand as I stand on a stage, hair flowing in an ethereal breeze. Strands of silver is printed on gorgeous lettering across the top with Benji and Jacob looking like a pair of badasses in the background. It nearly brings a tear to my eye as I examine the incredibly detailed work. Holy crap, Anon. It's fucking amazing. How in the hell did you do this? He has a smug smile on his face as he rolls it back up and sticks it back in the tube. I had a lot of time. A lot of off time stuck on that ship. It's all I've been up to since I got back. I've gotten pretty fucking good at these art programs. He isn't bullshitting. Looks as close to professional as I can hope to get. This kind of talent behind me, there's no fucking way we aren't going places. After the shock wears off, I hop up off the bed, wrapping in my wings with an ear-piercing shriek of joy. Holy shit, Anon! You're amazing! Man, is gonna take off just like I dreamed! I bounce him in my embrace, spinning him in circles as he continues to keep a grip on me, him laughing alongside me the whole time. As I calm down and we slowly steady, my arms wrap around his shoulders as he holds my back, rubbing my cheek against his. What in the world would I do without you, Anon? You would have done anything you put your mind to, Fang. You're incredibly talented, far more than I'll ever be. I'm just lucky you saw something in me. So fucking out of my league. I lean away from him, looking him straight in the eyes as I shake my head. I would have been dead on that beach. If you hadn't come back, that's where Fang the Dreamer would have ended. A miserable end to a shitty life. But, now that you are back, nothing is going to stop us. So let's get to work. I give him a kiss on the lips before picking up my guitar and settling in on the bed. He smiles at me before sitting at his desk popping open his art programs and the places he's scouting for my band. I sing softly as I strum away, him humming along from time to time. This is everything I need for my future. Practice and someone I can depend on. So much more than I thought I'd have again, and a fire that burns inside hotter than it has ever been. I will succeed. and I'll show Trish that I don't need to be some fucking social icon to get somewhere. Thought makes me miss a chord, causing a discordant twang deck across the room. You okay there, Fang? And Anon spins in his chair around to look at me with concern. I sighs my gaze drifts to the floor. Yeah, I'm fine, just... Thought of Trish again. <sighs> Fuck. She could have ruined everything for me. She nearly fucking did. All those ideas of hers trying to bring attention to her band... And marketable plans that just ended up fucking us over. Not that I don't still feel bad for slamming to her locker, but god damn it. If I had just stood up sooner, could have saved her band ages ago. 
Anon reaches over, putting a hand on my shoulder before shaking his head. No, you couldn't have, Fang. That gets my attention as I jump back. Pushing his hand off my shoulder, my wings firing up. The fucking mean I couldn't have? A tinge of anger in my voice as I glower at him. He holds up his hands and surrender before continuing. Don't take any offense from this, Fang. I don't mean you couldn't have done something. But that band was fucked out of the gate. Trish never would have stopped trying something new and stupid, dragging you guys down. You couldn't have saved it because there was nothing you could have done to stop it. The rage inside me calms down as I take a deep breath, exhaling all the anger out of my body and replacing it with shame as my wings relax. <sighs> Shit. Sorry, Anon. I thought you were saying that I didn't have a fucking chance. That band didn't. Your new one definitely fucking does. He leans over, planting a kiss on my cheek. Your new bandmates respect you. They're fucking good at what they do. All they need is a leader. A leader I know you can be. To bring them all the way to the top. I slowly smile at the dweeb. He always knows what to say. Thank you, Anon. I won't let you down. I promise. He smiles back at me. That damn confident smile of his. I know you won't, Fang. I won't screw up either. I'll get your name across this entire town, even if it takes me forever. We spend the rest of the day practicing. My fingers are nearly bleeding as I play for hours on end, with him tapping away at the keyboard, pulling up venue after venue, searching for new places for me to go. The more I look at what he pulls up, the more a small pit of sorrow fills my heart. I know I'll have to leave pizza time eventually, or at least mostly. Can't stay there if I want to have any real hope of making it big. I don't want to hurt Dave, but there is no way around it. One day I'm going to have to tell him I'm going, but I'm not looking forward to when that day arrives. Anon eventually stops me from playing when he spots a trickle of blood drip from my fingers, bandaging up my hand before stepping into the kitchen and cook us up some food. Art isn't the only talent he's picked up as I smell the aromas flowing out of the kitchen. I snicker as I listen to him mumble to himself like he is on a cooking show. Fucking dweeb. But I can't argue with the result. A delicious plate of spaghetti with flavors I didn't even know you could pull from a can of sauce. After slurping down our meal, he tosses the plates in the sink before we settle into bed for the night. An old familiar pose. My wings draping across him as I rest one of my arm rest on one of his arms. The other one wrapping around my waist. He falls asleep first, softly snoring in my arms as I look at him. He'll never truly know how much he means to me. I can only hope I show him a little more each day. End chapter 8. Alright. Let's see. Pop back over to chat for just a second. Okay. Yeah, that was the cat girl. Damn. The chat demand interaction for the algorithm. Maybe not interaction related to the topics, though. As long as people are talking, YouTube sees that, and they're like, yo, <laughs> get that guy. <laughs> Pop him up in the leaderboards now. I'm like, pains again, cocktail, you're trying to bring. And I'm looking like the grandma from SpongeBob. <laughs> in the library if it's just the same problem with fix I don't want to be left wanting for an ending man is drained <laughs> moisture I think the good scene you can get less than that fucking I'm starving I'll be out for a bit might not have dino nuggies and sauce but I do have chicken be back soon hopefully I have returned you got that chicken you got that good good Damn, Anon creating the weapon to surpass Metal Gear. This is a result of Anon not having a mini Roomba. But, but, Roomba is a canon event. You always get Roomba, right? You think Roomba didn't survive? Roomba didn't survive Anon's deployment. Unless they pull Roomba out of nowhere, in which case I'm going to pop off. Yeah, I mean, it's not like the band lasted, not even an E4. Yeah. Yeah. Fangs, uh... Fang's attention uh, pivoted elsewhere. The most you get uh, post E4 is what? Um, 
Trish's birthday when Anon uh, brings like the little concert stage. God willing, I didn't eat too fast. I cast tummy ache on you. <laughs> you shall now be in eternal pain. Such is the such is the way of things. Fang, stop saying that nothing will stop you because you're gonna will something into existence that will fucking stop you. We're all paranoid. We all we all don't want to see the bad things happen. We're sweating profusely. So, Sora Dobi, you have a lot of power right now. You can tear apart a lot of people's heart. <laughs> if if you if you fuck up this relationship, it'll be terrible. It'll be bad for all of us. Because then you're going to have an angry mob on your hands. The old jinx. E2 Doomer Rainbow joined a cult. Nah, nah, fucking Rainbow. Rainbow decided that he needed to. That he, he like, fucking Anon was just bringing him down, so he had to do something with his life. And he went off and he started, uh. He started Diamond Dogs. He's out on an oil rig somewhere. <clears throat> Rainbow leads a cult. Yeah, yeah. That would be. Yeah, he wouldn't just join, he would be the motherfucking icon. Well, now that we've gotten past the initial getting back together phase, their interactions are cute. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still I still have some reservations about how um, things played out initially. But it, it is nice to... I, I guess the focus of this fic wanted to be more um, what they do after they get back together post-E2, right? And that's fine. If that's the focus they want to put on it, that's all good. I'm not going to complain. I mean, there's, it, it, it's, it's fucking 80,000 words, you know, like how, how much, how long is like the average book? About 90,000. Okay. So yeah, this is about the length of a book, you know, they wrote a book. So, you know, you can't complain if like they decided to, well, you can't complain, but it, it makes sense why they would have maybe decided to have their writing focused on another area broken wings feels fairly happy from what i remember it another e2 cope fix yeah i mean it's it, it seems like it's trying to be more uplifting and everything which you know for people who did e2 and then they're like i need happy now <laughs> i need somebody to give me my dopamine I mean, this works for what it's worth, E2 does move pretty fast canonically. I mean, four year time, jump in five minutes. Yeah, I mean, like, comparatively to all the other endings, E2 is, like, the least, I would say, like, refined in terms of its ending because you just jump to the end and then you don't really get much in way of, like, how all that plays out. It's Anon sees Fang at pizzeria. Anon thinks about approaching Fang. Anon decides not to because Anon thinks he's better off alone and that people don't change. Cut. End scene. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Well, there wasn't much else there, huh? Man, Anon can cook and create art. Only one thing is missing. Something, something, something green shirt, something chair with wheels, something legs. Are we going to have to break his kneecaps? <laughs> Are we just going to fucking put him in the wheelchair? Call him Anivia. The Diamond Roombas. Feels way too uh, cheery happy. They instantly get back together and act way better than they should. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I, I think like the way, I, I think they kind of or graze over all that real quickly. They don't really give it too much development. Um, last chapter, I thought it was, I actually liked that Anon said something that kind of set Fang off. And there was like a moment of misunderstanding because, you know, realistically, it's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows. Like they're still, even if they're trying to be better, it doesn't mean that they're going to immediately know everything right to say. Right. I mean, even the best relationships are going to be ones where there's some kind of problem at some point. So it was nice to see that at the very least, you know, but the, their development is very quick. The relationship moves very quick. Um, there's no journey of improvement. Yeah, it feels 
Yeah, but the thing is, I think I, I don't think this fic is necessarily supposed to be about that, right? Um, at least not in the terms of them getting back together and them having a relationship. It's not the the fic isn't focused primarily on that. It's kind of why I feel E two is worse than E one in some ways. At least E one made me feel more. E1 is still worse in the sense of what happens, though. Yeah, I mean, E2, you just kind of feel hollow after everything because you know, like, you know that there is a reality where that can be fixed, you know? E1, you don't fix it. What is there to fix at that point? It's over. It's Jover, everybody. Go home. <laughs> There's nothing else here. We, we had the school snooting and uh, a sewer slide. You can't recover. You're done. At least in E2, you can see there would be a conceivable route where Anon could have tried to fix something there, could have tried to rekindle the relationship, or at the very least tried to make amends for something, but he doesn't. And so you're just set there like, man, fuck. <laughs> Kneecapping Anon, turning into Olivia sounds like a horror fic. I'm just thinking about like a fucking. <laughs> so we've we've talked about it before, where you do like the uh, the 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 human swap. So you have Inko with um, Fang, and then Anon with Olivia. And I'm just thinking of like a situation where Olivia gets like fucking uh, like leg replacement <laughs> surgery, <laughs> and like she wakes up and is able to walk, and she's like, "Doctor, who gave me the legs?" And <laughs> Anon wheels in on the wheelchair and is like, "Who?" <laughs> Who you who do you think gave you them? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so fucking stupid, but <laughs> it gave me a little bit of a giggle. Ugh. I like the more miserable leaning tone that none in the chamber has, though that probably that's probably pretty common with posty one fix. Yeah, I feel like that would be I mean I, look, I'm I'm under no I'm under no like illusion that whenever we read an e1 fic it's gonna be uplifting you know it's it's gonna be one of those like real real grinders we're gonna have to like oh god damn it all right let's keep it going go you know you kind of remind me of someone and on olivia both staring at a computer screen in the exact same pose no idea what you mean that's why I like Bad Apple, didn't pull any punches. Misery loves company. The change author uh, made in Done in the Chamber puts a great spin on it. It's still funny to think that thanks to Stella, the whole thing pops off. We love our girl Stella. One of the fan art pieces I like is Blind Inca with non, uh, non wheelchair Olivia. I just find it cute. I think I've seen that one. I, I, that, that rings a bell in my brain. Good old hydration. <clears throat> Ooh. You guys ever like um like take a big swig of something and like it goes down your throat fine, but it feels like as it gets lower in your gut, it suddenly you hit like a constricted tunnel and it feels like it has to like expand it and you're like, oh, oh, why does it feel like my heart's about to fucking explode? Jesus Christ. I hate that feeling. I don't understand how it happens. It's fucking water. If there's like a fucking if there's a, a choke point, the water should be able to, uh, I don't know, be liquid and go without expanding me. It's fucking weird, man. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Just kind of like, they still loved each other in those final moments. E2 is like, and on dips uh, to waste away and Fang is barely functioning. Still the same as remixed in Monty OST. Now it pops up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to clear out confusion on the chambers E1 with alteration that Fang tries to shoot Stella on the way up series. This is missing one bolt to shoot Anon on in the leg. I guess that makes sense then why it's titled None in the Chamber, right? <laughs> I would ask, does our girl Stella survive? But... Uh, that that would be a spoiler, wouldn't it? So we would have to wait till we actually get to that to read it. Oh, 
Oh boy. <clears throat> All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and pop into this chapter nine because we're coming up on the four hour marker. And usually for a Monday stream, four hours is right about, right about where we want to like try and keep it. So I think what we'll do is we'll do chapter nine here. We'll do like a quick wind down or I, I say a quick wind down. We'll just wind down however long that runs for. And then I'll be a stream for the night. So, yeah, spoiler, that's what I didn't say. Very good, very good. Oh, I see. I was wondering how you do a post E1 fic. I think there's another fic that um, lets E1 play out as it does, but then has Anon just trying to, like, come to terms with everything. And I think Stella plays a part in that one, at least from what I saw in the, um, in the summary. Still in Snoot game. Quirky, cute, energetic, and massive weave. We'd love to see the dorky queen pop off. Yeah, Rose is great and none in the chamber. Best girl all the way, no doubt. The one that Stella you're thinking of is Bad Apple. Yeah, sounds like Bad Apple. I think that was what it was. Olivia looks down at her Caucasian white legs. <laughs> Add on. He wheels over and just gives her a hug. Everyone's great and they, uh, they're written and feel like actual people. And that's what we'd love to see. So in GVH, it's just humonger, destroyer of words, destroyer of worlds. Hey, everybody says that fucking Snoot game did it better, so doesn't surprise me. I say everybody says it. Uh, everybody that I've heard says it, <laughs> so... All right, all that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and roll into chapter nine here. Chapter nine, moving forward. A few more weeks go by and show after show, day after day, the crowd at pizza time continues to grow. Dave has to set out more tables just to fit more seating space so people wouldn't be standing around dropping pizza everywhere. I can barely keep up with ordering new merch as the customers, new and old, keep clearing the table. At this rate, I have to set up a website for on-demand sales, or there's no hope I'll be able to get people what they actually want. Well, actually, I'll have Anon do it. He's got the time and the skills to whip up something quick. With every show's end, I know what I'll have to do is coming up whether I want to or not. Anon has been contacted by a couple of venues, a few in Volcadera proper instead of here, that have taken an interest in our having our band play for them a few weeks, a few nights a week. We would be stupid not to accept more money in the city than down here in Skin Row, but it also means doing something I don't want to do. Telling Dave. He's so damn happy these days, making money hand over fist with a huge poster of my band on the front of the pizzeria with a sign, Birthplace of Strands of Silver. Just no way my dream can take off if I stay here forever, though. I have to move on. Today's a rare day off, everyone hanging out with their families, but pizza time's still open. We decide to head over there, especially since Dave promised to bring something from home for us to make it special. I'm sitting in one of the booths with Anon, idly picking at the pizza Dave had brought for us. It's my favorite one that he made, covered in meat and cheese, but I still can't get myself to take a bite. Anon notices I haven't done anything other than roll meatballs around and speaks up. You okay, Fang? You haven't eaten a thing since we got here. I can feel his gaze on me, but I can't lift my head. I just keep staring at my plate. A sullen frown on my beak. I have to let Dave know we're leaving. I don't fucking know how to do it. My eyes missed over as I struggle to come with grips with what I need to do. My wings shuddering as I bury my face in my hands. He's the only reason I even had a chance to start over. Now I have to leave him. Anna reaches across the table, taking my hands in his as I finally lift my eyes. I know this sucks, Fang, but you have to do it. I mean, you won't be leaving him completely. Fridays are booked up for the most for most of the places we're going, so you can still give him that. <laughs> One day a week for a guy for the guy who gave me my job? When no one else would? 
who supported me every step of the way and never once looked down on me? It doesn't seem like enough, Anon. A single tear runs down my cheek, dropping on the table. It's the best we can do. The only way we're going to get this band off the ground is through bigger venues and more people. And I'll be honest, far less dangerous clientele. If nothing else, Dave will be able to proudly hang that poster forever. People will come from all around to see where you got your start when you're famous. True. It still sucks, though. I hate doing this. Especially to him. Anon squeezes my hand gently before letting them go. I know you do. That's why you deserve everything that's happened so far. That's been happening so far. You've got a heart of gold. I'll see you through all this. I sniffle, drying tears off my sleeve. <laughs> Thanks, Anon. Guess we better eat this before it gets cold. I don't want to waste his hard work. He smiles at me, picking up a slice from his plate, then stopping for a moment and looking back and forth between me and the slice. I roll my eyes, taking the slice right out of his hands before flinging it in the air, catching it in one bite. <laughs> Hell yeah! He cheers with a giant grin on his face. You can still pull that off. You really should do parties sometime. Not on your life, dweeb. Slowly but surely, we eat away at the tasty goodness before us. We had just settled into food comas, spread across the booth, when Dave comes out, picking up the pizza pan and chucking, chuckling at our splayed out selves. It is nice to have the place to ourselves. Nobody really shows up on holiday weeks. In Skin Row, most are still working if they're not with their families, but Dave opens up anyway with just him in the back for anyone who stop, wants to stop in. Recovering from our comas, we set ourselves upright and I stare off into space, still trying to find out a way to do this without destroying Dave. Benji and Jacob already know I'm going to talk with them. And they left it to me, figuring I'll be able to break the news the softest, the jackasses. Sure, send the tarot girl with a soft to soften the blow. So if I can somehow not break his heart considering how much he cares about me. <sighs> Fucking hell, this blows. I sigh as I stand up from the booth, putting a hand on Anon's. <sighs> I gotta go tell him. If I don't do it now, I'm gonna fucking back out and hide. Stay here, okay? He nods somberly, and I lean over, giving him a kiss before heading back uh, to the back. Dave hasn't seen me come in yet, still working on preparing dough for the rest of the week, covering in shrink wrap and sliding into a giant fridge. How the hell am I going to do this? I fidget in place, making circles on the floor with my boot. I don't see a way out of this that doesn't hurt someone I care about. Son of a bitch. I tiptoed closer to him, passing by the brick oven he had just recently put in. The band's success made him enough to enough money to finally afford it, and the pizzas are better than ever. Dave no longer has to use a conveyor oven that nukes the crust into oblivion. He can make top quality stuff with the same ingredients. Every step is harder than the last, the pace becoming shaky as the reality of my situation grows as I get closer. This is gonna suck. I tap him on the shoulder. Hey, Dave. I need to talk to you, if you have a moment. He turns to me after putting down the dough he was working on, dusting off his hands on his apron. Uh, sure, Fang. What do you need? I can't speak at first. The moment I had been dreading since our popularity started kicking off is right here in front of me, and I still don't fucking know what to say, goddammit. I don't know how to do this. I I choke on a knot in my throat, struggling to clear it. I I have to leave in two weeks. The band has gotten some new venues in town, and I won't have as much time anymore, so I... I... I can't finish. The sobs overtake me and choke out every word I try to get out as I give up and cover my face with my hands. This is the shittiest thing I'll ever have to do, and I can't even fucking finish my sentence. My band is gonna make it. We're making money like crazy in places that wouldn't have touched us with a ten-foot pole, and I respond almost immediately, but fuck me. Is it worth it if I have to hurt him? Dave doesn't say a word at first. Just cradles me with both arms and hugs me tight. 
pressing my face into his chest and rocking me side to side. Shh. It's okay, baby girl. I knew this day was coming. This place is far too small for a town like yours, and I'm lucky to have had you even this long. I wrapped my arms around his back, burying my eyes into his apron and his tears streamed down my cheeks. Here I am trying to leave. He's still being so nice to me. I don't know what to do. I, mean, I don't get much time to think before he eases back from me, placing his hands on my cheeks and tilting my face up to his. Ever since you walked in that door, I knew you were special. As much as you tried to bury it in apathy and misery, there was a spark in you. A beautiful flame waiting to be lit. I only ever wanted to be there to see it happen. And here you are proving me right. But I... I have to leave, Dave. The only night I got free will be Friday. I don't even know how long I'll be able to keep that open. I don't want to abandon you here. I managed to stammer that out before he shakes his head, still gently holding my face. Doesn't matter, Fang. You chased that dream, and you built that wonderful future of yours. You deserve the future you deserve to have. I'll be here every night making food and cheering you on as your star rises. Always have a home here. He pulls me back into a hug, gently brushing his hand through my hair. I weep in his arms, tears of joy to have someone like him at my back even as I'm going to leave. I don't know what I did to deserve him in my life, but I'll be forever grateful for whatever luck or force put him here. A few minutes pass as he supports me in his arms. The soft hum of the AC, the only sound besides my sniffles to fill the room. With one last sniffle, I let him go and step away. My eyes, red and puffy, but with a smile on my face. Thank you, Dave. I'll be honest, I didn't think this would go so well. I spent a whole damn month trying to figure out how to break the news and stressing myself out. And you go and just be sweet on me the whole time throw my arms up in frustration before letting them fall back to my sides. This is not even remotely like how I thought it would go. <clears throat> he chuckles to himself, those red eyes of his still misty with tears of his own. You weren't the only one who prepared for this, Fang. Like I said, I already knew you were going to leave, just didn't know when. He shrugs, putting a claw tip under his chin. Under my chin. You knock him dead, Fang. You show the whole damn world who you are, how talented you are, and how fucking hard you worked during this. I take his hand in both of mine, my two combined, my two combined barely enough to cover one of his. I will. I promise I will. Thank you so much. He pulls me in for one last hug before giving me a slap on the back. Good. Now go, go get on out of here, Fang. You got work to do and a boyfriend to hang out with. God damn, he can hit hard when he wants to. I express the urge to yelp. Okay, okay. I'll see you later, Dave. Bye, Fang. Well, shit, guess I wound myself up for nothing. I should have known better. Dave never once did anything but support me. Never stopped trying even when I gave up on myself. I was there to prop me up when I fell. My biggest fan from day one, and the father figure I needed to steer me right. I leave the kitchen in a glow, the fears I had unfounded, as I slide back into the booth beside Anon, who looks surprised to not see me moping. So, how'd it go? I smile at him, my wing pulling him closer to me. <laughs> it went great. Seems Dave knew before I did what was going to happen. We're here for a couple more weeks, and then boom. Off to new heights in the streets of Volcadera. And we can still come back here, when we have time, if we want. He wraps an arm around my waist, determination beaming from his grin. And then after that, the big stop. The stadium. Thousands of faces looking at you, and their voices calling your name. Bang! 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 He lowers his voice, pretending to be an audience all on his own until I jab him in the side with my elbow. Stop, dweeb! We got a lot more work to do before we even start thinking about that. We gotta keep building our audience and our band, so you keep running that noggin of yours and I'll keep practicing. You got it, babe. 
He winks at me, snapping his fingers. Then some realization watches over his face as he stares at the wall. Mm, what is it, Anon? I shake him to get his attention as he comes back to reality. You know, we're going to be back in your neighborhood with these places we're going to. Yeah? I tilt to my side. I tilt my head to the side. A spark of worry in my heart, wondering where he's going with this. He puts his hand under his chin, deep in thought, or trying to figure out how he was going to word what he had to say, before turning back to me. We should... We should probably go see your parents. I don't... I can't yet. I... I stand around as the thought of seeing them so soon sends me spiraling into a panic. I'm still not sure if I can face them. There's so much that can go wrong. I still don't feel like I look good enough to go yet. All my tattoos. My hair is still so short. Fuck me, this is not a good fucking plan. I stagger out of the booth, nearly tripping over my boots as I push toward the window as Anon sits in the booth dumbstruck by my sudden freakout. I sigh as I stare out at the snowflakes falling from the sky. My hand crawls up my shoulders before my claws settle on my scales, the tips nearly piercing through. Cautiously makes his way to me, putting his hands under mine, preventing me from impaling myself. Sorry, Fang. I didn't mean to upset you, I just thought. I cut him off with a shake of my head, sighing as the shock wears off. It's alright, Anon. I've thought about it myself. I don't want to see my mom again, but my dad... I'm still scared of what he's going to say. What he's going to do when he sees me again. I'm not just a little girl anymore. Just look at me. He lets his arms fall to the side as I run my hands across my scales and all the tattoos that cover my body. Here's abuse I've done to myself with left scars. Not all of them physical. Barely look like anything he'd remember. My hair only just reaching the top of my neck. What if he's upset? Disappointed to see what I've done? What if he shouts me out of the house? I wouldn't be able to take it. I can't... My thoughts are cut short as Anon reaches under my arms and pulls me close, gingerly resting his arms across my waist. I softly exhale, stress flowing from me as I lean into his embrace. It's gonna be alright, Fang. They love you, and your dad might be an absolutely terrifying fucking hard ass, but I'm sure he'll be happy to see you, no matter what. He gulps down the fear in his throat before he continues. I really hope he doesn't try to beat my head in the golf club when he sees me, though. I squeeze his hand in mine, tempting to comfort him. He won't do anything to you. Not with me at your side. He won't try anything with me in the splash zone. Well, that's comforting. Terrifying. Terrifying. Stop trying to make words, Anon. You'll blow a fuse. Alright, alright. Well, did you want to plan to see them before or after we get to touring the, uh, around this town? I suppose it's best to get it out of the way. Plus, it's the holidays. I don't want to some points just for showing up. I know Mom will be thrilled. It's been years since we spent the winter together as a family. He leans down and kisses me on the snout. Then that's what we'll do. Guess I better shave and get my good clothes on. Can't go showing up at your parents looking like a fucking bum. I want to smack him for kissing my snout, but I'll let him get away with it. For now. Yeah, I'll need to see if I can find a nice dress to wear or something festive. If I show up in my all-black outfit, it's just gonna start a fight. You in a dress. Well, now that'll be a sight to see. I jab him in the ribs. Shut up, dweeb. Not a lot of opportunities to get dressed up for anything down here in Skin Row, and I'm gonna fucking take it. He rubs his impacted ribs with a laugh. <laughs> hey, I'm not knocking it. I think you'll look gorgeous in a dress, and I'm looking forward to it. And you're fucking better. <laughs> we start making real money, and we're gonna start going out to fancy restaurants, and your ass is gonna need a dress, shirt, and tie. He reaches up to his neck, thought of a tie wrapping around it, causing him to gulp. I always knew this day would come. Formal tires found me at last. 
Snort escapes my beak as I pull out my uh, pull out from his arms, turning and putting my hands on his shoulders. <laughs> Not that formal. Could you really see me dying in anything other than a gothic slit dress? Think about it. I'll be your queen. You'll be my handsome dark prince. I slowly drag a claw tip across his cheek, causing him to shudder. That's a good boy. Now come on, let's get home before the snow buries us in here. Don't need to tell me twice, my queen. He lowers himself to his knees before kissing the top of my hand as I pull him back to his feet. Come along then, my prince. Our castle awaits. We huddle close together for warmth during the long walk home. A massive cold snap is turning the whole of Volcadera into an icebox with no sign of ending. His apartment is a bit farther away than mine was, but with none of my old memories to haunt me, it's worth the walk. The snow has started to fall hard and already has buried some of the people sleeping on the benches. We shoot awake in a puff who shoot awake in a puff of white snow before grumbling and hiding under the awnings. You know, it's fucking weird. Anon looks around at all the snow piling up. I thought it never snows in Volcadera. Not normally. I flick a snowflake off the tip of my beak. It's one of those once in an ice age, once in an age cold snaps, plus a bunch of storms rolled in with it. Probably the only time we'll ever see it in our lives here. Guess we're lucky then. You know, minus the freezing to fucking death part of it. He shudders as he nudges me closer to him. <laughs> no shit. Let's get home before my feathers snap in the ice. As we get home, I shove open the door to the welcoming burst of hot air from the heater. Oh, thank Raptor Jesus for eating. The snow melts off my scales and wings as feeling returns to them before I plop down on the bed, kicking off my boots. Anon throws his shoes in the corner before landing beside me as I scoot up to absorb any warmth he had left. So, we gonna see them tomorrow? I nod. Better to get it done rather than putting it off any longer. Yeah, let me call them up real quick. I really hope it's Mom who answers. Even though she's gonna blow my ear out. Grabbing my phone, I dial a number. Barely gets past one ring before I hear my mother's cheery voice on the other end. You've reached the Anon, the Aaron residence. Anon residence, whoopsies. God, she needs to get a cell phone someday. Hey, Mom, it's me, Lucy. As soon as the words finish leaving my mouth, I temporarily lose hearing in my right ear from, right ear from her screech of joy. The din of tinnitus makes my vision blur before I can hear again. Oh, honey, it's so good to hear from you. What are you up to for the holidays? Anything special? Actually, about that, Mom. Can I stop by tomorrow? I want to see you guys again. If it's not any trouble, at least I... I don't get a chance to finish my sentence. Of course, Lucy. I'd be glad to see you. I'll have a place set for you at the table and everything. Oh, I get to see my Lucy again. You hear bubbly cries of joy bleeding across the room, even catching Anon's attention as he smiles. Though, of course, here comes the hard part. I'm gonna be bringing someone over too, Mom. <laughs> oh, who's coming? It's no trouble. I can make a pl space for another. It's... It's Anon, Mom. The silence is almost deafening. I hadn't told her much about what happened, but I never needed to say anything. She knew the moment I shouted at her in the night, it all went down. Seems like forever before she finally speaks again. Are you sure, dear? Yes, Mom. We've been patching things up for a while now. Trust me, it's okay. Promise me you'll keep Dad from hurting him. I want to come back and then need to leave for a funeral. Another moment of silence passes with the awkwardness not lost even on Anon, who is staring intently at the phone. Alright, dear. I'll make sure he's welcome. You two just come with your appetites. You won't be leaving me hungry. A tremendous sigh of relief passes through my lips as I smile. Thank you, Mom. I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. I love you too, Lucy. The phone call ends with a click. So I drop my phone on the bed and look over at the somewhat terrified Anon. Put a hand on his cheek, 
gently rubbing it to comfort him. It's okay, love. Dad is more terrified of my mom than anything in this world. Nothing will happen to you. I promise. He nods silently before finally recovering from the terror. All right, I trust you, Fang. Though I need to get to work. No rest from the wicked when my t beautiful Taro love is this close to her dream. He gives me a kiss before hopping off the bed to hit up his laptop. Oh, hey, Anon. Can you put together a website for us, please? I'm gonna need a new place to sell our shit after we leave here. He turns the screen to me. A fresh site with our logo, logo and pictures of all of us with bios and a link to the merch webpage. What do you think I've been doing all this time? Not just picking places for you to play. Make sure you guys make a profit. I blink in surprise as I look at what he has made. Well, holy shit. I feel like I need to start paying you soon. Just give me all the wing hugs I ask for when we're even. I stand up and sidle in beside him, wrapping a wing around his shoulder. You got it, dweeb. He runs his fingers through my wing with a grin on his face. Soft, feathery goodness. What is life without it? You mumbled again. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. We spend the rest of the day going over plans for the band and the website he has made for us, which, with me putting my uh, own spin on his work so it speaks with both our voices, tomorrow's going to be fucking difficult. I trust my mom and I know the power she has over my dad, but it's still scary going back home. Another thing I desperately need to not fuck up. Nearly every part of it is out of my hands. I just have to hope it'll all go well and, and I won't be leaving in an ambulance. And that's the end of chapter 9. And now we have chapter 10, Homecoming. But, like I said, we're about at the 4 hour marker. I feel like that's a pretty good time to end it. We don't need to make this a super long grinder like we uh, sometimes do with our streams. So if we keep at this pace and the chapters are about this long, I would say we have two more reading chapters before we get through Broken Wings. So we're, we're going at an okay pace, I'd say. I mean, obviously we're stopping a lot to chat and that's, uh, that, yeah, that's worth it. So however long it takes to get there, we'll get there. Uh, I'm going to pop back over to chat real quick and catch up with everything that was said. Let's see. Uh, GVH style looks like she swallowed a fridge. Never played GVH, never will. Don't want to ruin the perception of characters. Watch the caveman and VOD. GVH style a job with a hut on the vegan diet. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even heard of GVH. I had heard of Snoop Game. Saw the 4chan versus at least 20 Canadians video. I saw that video, but I haven't watched it. Honestly, I, I think I've mentioned it before on stream, but I want I do want to play GVH just so that way I've got context for everything, you know? Like, it feels like before I can, like, fully, like, tear into it or something, I ought to give it a go even if people say that it's not great. Plus it makes, it'll probably make for good content, poking fun at it and everything. We can always be like, that's not my thing. God damn it. GVH popped up with my discovery queue on steam. I've seen GVH versus Snoot game characters. That was a fun vid. <laughs> when did the meteor wipe you guys out? Meteor drops gun. Snoot game. So do you uh, also have yourself a human boyfriend? GVH the fuck's a human. Puppet Pals video for GVH is also gold. Dead ass was pog in the moment Anon stepped in. Thought she was gonna start rapping for a second. Anon's curtain call is also funny. I'll still be here. Yeah, we're we're, we're still all scared, aren't we? we? Any anytime they're like, hey, everything's gonna be okay, we're like, no, it won't. You're lying to me. You're just setting me up for failure. I like that the goal seems to be for Fang to be a musician since that's the one bridge that hasn't been burned. Definitely not a bad choice. It is interesting to see you're actually pursuing it too. I appreciate it. He's gonna hug her, isn't he? Just with how hopeful the story seems to be. Yeah, Dave, Dave, was, a, Dave was a good guy. It's gonna be a bunch of harsh words then followed by a fatherly hug. Can't remember how exactly it played out. But this is a coat fic though, through and through. Dark Prince, good boy, you're doing things to me, woman. <laughs> uh, that good boy came, uh, that, 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 good, that good boy would have probably uh, fucked me up a little bit, to be honest. I probably would have been like, uh, 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 okay, okay, yeah, sure. 
King Nufik, Goth Queen Fang, the Dark Lord Prince, and on the two final bosses. Ultra Coat Fick. I want damn. I want realism, damn it. I want pictures of Spider Man. Is this like one of those Korean comics where the Demon Queen was the good guy all along or something? <laughs> Yo, we're gonna subvert your expectations by doing exactly what you expect. <laughs> Is too much of an accurate description. <laughs> Getting vibes from that one image of dead Anon in his car with Ripley and Nazar watching. <laughs> Anon has a car. I'm getting now. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that image. I'm trying to like, I'm I'm combing through my brain and nothing's coming up. Wing hugs the best paycheck. It is. I you know. From 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 your from your your tarot your beautiful tarot GF hell yeah. It has been a good balance of chat and read today. I think it's because we got like a lot of like the chatting out at the gate, so we were able to keep it more consistent uh, between the chapters. So maybe that's how we'll kind of approach this in the future. We'll get like a lot of like shooting the shit and everything out earlier on, maybe like an hour hour and a half, and then we'll get to reading, and then we'll obviously have our intermissions. So you know because. Like I said, sometimes I want to talk about the chapter. Sometimes I saw something in chat I want to talk about. You know, be it whatever it is. Do you have a pick for after Broken Wings? Um, not yet. Not yet. Um, because, one, I don't know if we're going to roll straight into another uh, Snoop fanfic. If we do, um, I'm probably going to leave it to you guys to give a... Uh, like I said, I'll probably post it in like a poll and then see what people think. Uh, just so that way, you know get a good read on what uh what people want to hear um but also on top of that i might want to like try reading something else for like a one-off or something um maybe like uh like like i mentioned earlier or before uh maybe do like just some scp article reading for the fuck of it because you can easily talk with that one or maybe like a creepypasta or some shit you know just expand it a little bit because like i said before these reading streams don't only have to be like snoot and wani that's what they're going to be for a lot of stuff more than likely just because well that's what we all like right but um it's not it's not going to be the only thing so for right now we're going to be focusing on just getting through broken wings and then we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get to it so the news co-op is a makeshift plushy wait real shit okay okay Pathina Fang, GVH, would get wrecked by Lucy Fang. I mean, I get the impression that, like, all of the Snoot game characters would probably be able to crush their GVH counterpart. At least that's the impression I've gotten from chat. A few things, fewer things that can make a man's legs turn to jelly than good boy. Especially if they're, like, grabbing you by the chin and making you look at them. <clears throat> clears my throat let's tap let's give fang the boop real quick uh get me a dino gf that pulls me into a wink and tail hug seven minutes in heaven right there and then i'll pass away happily <laughs> knowing that named her fat thing on gvh gave me a stroke pizza box scp that makes the pizza you're subconsciously thinking of when you touch it See, that's the thing about, like, <laughs> that's the thing about SCPs. You've got ones that are like, this dude is fucking insane and will absolutely kill you. He'll rip you to shreds and bring you in his pocket dimension and turn you to goo. And then you've got, this is a pizza box. It makes pizza. <laughs> it, it, it's, you, you got, like, a very wide net there, and that can be a really fun just one-off. <laughs> I mean, GVH Stella might be the exception. Son of a bitch. I guess GVH has to have one dub, right? Especially Snoot Game Reed. He's he's got muscle in him. Whereas GVH Reed is a stick. GVH Stella can use her wideness to win. Crush. Read how GVH Fang is there, while Snoot Fang is more Jewish. GVH Stella existing is enough. Where the dragons went is an amazing SCP. Oh yeah, that's the that's the tearjerker one, isn't it? Like where like all the, the you as long as people are like have like whim and whimsy and imagination, everything is fine. But like the moment it doesn't, the the little paper dragons aren't there anymore. 
I'm probably like missing out some details or butchering it a little bit, but that's kind of what I remember about it. I just remember people being like, Pippa Hands, I'm really sad about this because it's such a, it's such a sad one. But, uh, <laughs> this SCP key opens any lock. This SCP key opens to a forest with a wolf thing that'll slaughter you. <laughs> Don't get them confused. They look identical, by the way. <laughs> it's funny because, like, you you think about that. If you did have two identical keys like that, I, I know the one with the fucking, uh, the forest thing. I remember that uh, being something that was in, like, a containment breach and everything. But, uh, it's funny, like, you just open a door, you look in, and you're like, well, there wasn't a forest on the other side of this, so I think I got the wrong key. Let me, uh, close the door, you relock it, pull out a different key. Okay, there we go. This is my bathroom again. This SCP, if you sit on it, turns you peeny into a vagu. This new game, Stella Knox. Hokuto no Shinken. Knows, knows Hokuto no Shinken. She will win against GVH, Stella. Is that like a fighting form? Is that like... I'm going to kick your fucking ass embodiment or something. Apparently the author updated eight years uh, later. And that was when we got the book in gem part eight years after it went dormant. Hmm. Hmm. I, I it, it's actually been like a quite a while since I've ever like I brushed up on any SCP stuff. The, the one that I see more often is uh, Mallow, and I mean, well, you know, there's not many fucking SCPs that people thirst over, but I guess that's like, th that's the representative one. Monster fucker's gonna monster fuck, I suppose. <laughs> oh yeah, the gender stone, it, wor <laughs> it works worse the more you use it. Wait, what do you mean it works worse? Wait, okay, hold up. How does... See, this is what I'm saying. Like, we got we got things like this where now I'm sitting here like, well, okay, wait, you mean it works worse? If I had the SCP article in front of me, I could just read that shit right now. We could all go over it. Stella is an SCP. SG Stella has the power of God and anime on her side. She got them tarot reads, baby. Just pull out the fucking death card. The death card with Trish being annihilated by the skeletons. God, I love the puppet. <laughs> puppet Pals is fucking great. This is North Star. There's also the drawn woman. She was made using different SCPs. It's cute and sad. She gets depressed when she finds out she's a drawing. Mallow is just a scary looking friend. Yeah, that's the impression I get from it, right? Two sides of SCP, horror and horny. And artists make Mallow cute and they manage it. And whatever Dr. Bright is doing. I just, I, I'm just around, man. I'm dying, but my fucking funny amulet uh, keeps me alive. It's all good. That one's Dr. Bright, right? Or is that a different doctor? I, can't, I, I feel like Dr. Bright had the amulet. Pulls out the world card. <laughs> me... Asking Stella for a reading. Gee, I hope my day turns out really well and everything is okay. The tower. <laughs> oh, wait. Hokuto no Ken is Kinshiro's fighting style. Fist of the North Star. Okay, then that kicks ass. <laughs> Dr. Bright is the one with the amulet, yes. Bright is the immortal amulet, dude, yeah. Okay, okay, we're good. I got it right. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes this old brain can squeeze out a little bit of information, turns out. But yeah, that's what I mean, though. Like, obviously, like, fucking SCP would be just, like, a little fun thing for maybe, like, a one-off or two. So, when it comes to these weeding, 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 Jesus Christ, I, I can't fucking talk. When it comes to these reading streams, we'll kind of play it by ear. At least we'll get through Broken Wings, and then we'll see how we're feeling um, come the time that we finish it. Hello, random strangers. Hello, Juan. Hope you're doing well. You're catching us at the tail end of the stream, unfortunately, but we're just kind of chatting now. We've got the little fang on stream as a result. The locket made by throwing the heel SCP pill into the clockwork machine will turn you into a muscle monster thing. 
busy for a while, but gets more dangerous as the, the more you use it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, like, I, I remember looking up different, like, SCP articles at one point, but, like, a majority of my information definitely comes from, like, containment breach and the like. I think I played, like, VR containment breach, and that was pretty fun. I, I think my favorite containment breach experience, though, was... um was playing co-op scp containment breach with jeremy and alexis there, there's a there's a clip on twitch let me see if i can pull it up real quick because it, it, it it's the one thing i think about anytime i remember that because it's just it, it tickles me it tickles me so well uh, let's see your creator dashboard where is clips show me my clips fucking right now content clips here we go a, a, a fucking metric fuck ton of uh, lethal company ones. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Wait, where is it? I know it's here somewhere. Motherfucker. Radius, SCP Lab Rat. Okay, SCP Lab Rat was the VR one. That's, I remember that. Did Jeremy clip it? Oh, filter by, filter all. There we go. Okay, now I've got all the fucking clips. Okay, where was it? SCP, 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 SCP. Am I not going to find it? Oh, here it is. Right? Triple kill? Is that it? Presses play. Presses play many times. Show me my fucking clip, Twitch. I don't ask you for much. Oh my god, I hate Twitch. Pop over to chat for a second. I'm gonna try and get that figured out. There's an SCP for gum at one point, I think. <laughs> the anomalous gum. The clockwork machine is one of the more interesting SCPs to me. Well, I mean, like, it's one of, it's something into something else, right? That's always a fun little game to play. I know about the Coke SCP. The one that makes your heart go really hard and makes you sprint, but then you die. Because your heart blows up. <laughs> it's a long list last time. I was really in it. You talking about the triple neck snap? Yes, Jeremy, I'm talking about the triple neck snap. <laughs> well, no, it was a double neck snap. Was, oh, no, 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 no. That was, okay, no, there was two different ones. Yeah, yeah, there was two different ones. Gator desktop pet now caveman on. I like I said, the moment they put that out, I'm grabbing it. The mouse story about the dude and his sister is great though. I think there's an alarm clock SCP that gets louder and louder if you don't hit snooze. It could destroy the world if it gets allowed to get too loud. I could use that some days to be honest. There's a cake one that doubles if it isn't eaten. I, you know, I see the thing is you're all like bringing these up and like my brain is like slightly remembering it. I'm like, oh yeah, that was a thing, wasn't it? Okay. What if I, all right, I'm going to copy the clip link. I'm going to paste it in the browser. Are we, are we good now? I'll turn the volume down. I think the, I think Twitch just doesn't want to give me my clip. I think Twitch has robbed me. Motherfucker. <laughs> I can't believe this shit. Jeremy, if you're there, do you have the uh, the link to the one clip where uh, you bang your fucking head in the wall? Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You sent it. Okay, is this going to work? Twitch. Like, I'm not even asking you for much. Just show me one fucking clip. I, I adhere to your whole, like, fucking affiliate thing. The least you can do is give me my clip on demand, you piece of shit. Some of the OO, the, the O1 uh, proposals are wild. It's a dodgeball that doesn't lose momentum. It can rapidly turn lethal. That's the one that hit Inko, I think. The bridge SCP that just makes you hate Carthage. <laughs> See, the thing is, I don't know if that's a joke or not. <laughs> The factory, the day breaks, and the gate guardian are the ones I remember. Mostly the gate guardian. I think the only one of those that I know about is the day breaks.
Yeah, it looks like Twitch is just going to be a dickhead. They, they aren't letting me see it. I really wanted to show it on stream, too. Fucking ch Oh, no, there we go. It finally loaded. I don't know why I had to do it like 15 seconds. Up next? No, no, no. I don't want an up next. I want to show the fucking clip. All right, here we go. Bam. Uh, Fang, you're going to need to... Uh, we'll tuck you over here for right now, Fang. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So this is... Uh, I guess we didn't clip it, but there's uh, two events with 049 destroying us. The one I sent you... Uh, when you learned he could take off and that's what I my favorite one is when he sneaks up on I th that's actually one of the clips uh, I saw it earlier and I was trying to get it to work I can see if I can make it work uh, after this one because this one I had to like fucking slam against the wall a couple times for it to actually do what I wanted it to blood crystal SCP is creepy well when you talk about blood crystals yeah I would I would figure that would be a little odd world gone beautiful is the there is no recourse we're fucked in 24 hours guaranteed so let's make a let's take a load off folks there, there is something, uh, there's something about knowing when your end's coming that you can just kind of be like, all right, oh well, a little evil tonight. Twitch is being a little devious, a little bit of an asshole, perhaps, maybe even kind of, an, kind of stinky. I don't know what it is sometimes. Twitch just doesn't like me. Like I'll like go to, I'll pull up OBS, I'll go to update my stream title, and then it'll be like, no, I don't want you. And I'm like, okay, we'll refresh again. No. This is why I'm going to YouTube, you stupid son of a bitch. Yes, be where it's just a radio that just makes just makes a really personal attack on people talking to it. <laughs> the world's biggest hater, if you will. You have the whole world. Pipe Nightmare is one of the OG disturbing ones. There was a more recent Walden one. All right, here I'm gonna I'm gonna play this clip. So again, context for this is we're playing the uh, SCP YouTube migration. Let's go. YouTube has been treating me way better than Twitch ever has. I, <laughs> I'll tell you that right fucking now. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this was SCP um, co-op with uh, Jeremy and Alexis. Yeah, we're good. We're totally not talking about leaving the bomb. Dude. Oh! Oh shit, Jeremy, run! Oh my god! <laughs> no! Oh, for the love of God, now he's after me now! Get me out Alexis, of here. I've saved you! Oh, like, I've already. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> 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 oh, it's so good. Me leggy, me leggy. Surely Fang doesn't do something suspicious, causing clips not to work. No, I, I I would fully believe that's just Twitch being fucking Twitch, alright? <laughs> like Twitch doesn't want to work with me sometimes. Okay, alright, yeah, so this is the other clip that this one was one that Jeremy was talking about. Dare one of you to look up right now. No. I see his nail. Get the peanuts oh, in here! <laughs> come on, let's get alright, back, 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 back. <laughs> that that's some that's some horse shit. <laughs> that's some caca. <laughs> I think this is before I got my new mic too. Yeah, it probably shows. <laughs> you see the stubby legs of peanut. Um, yeah. I didn't even see the legs. I just got like the. Oh, oh, oh. Where did he wow. come from? <laughs> Motherfucker pulls off a triple kill because nobody I looked behind the... us. Oh, oh. Where did he wow. come from? Uh, Jeremy, we should go back and do like another rerun of that. I think that'd be pretty fucking funny. Let's get, let's get like, uh, let's try and get Kane in on it too this time. Just get like a whole bunch of people being fucking stupid. <laughs> running around screaming. On oh, the best one, Steel Dan, where it's a phallic device that has a mode that will break through concrete. The Heaven Piercer. <laughs> For when you really need to hit that itch. Showing the Plague Doctor Snoot game. The Plague Doctor would uh, be just staring at the screen for a while, being like, they're just like me, for real, for real. As he strokes his, his, his fucking Plague Doctor mask. Damn, that was quick. Yeah. SCP-085, uh, Cassie. That's the drawn lady. There's a cute interaction with the coffee machine that makes any drink. A staff member asks the machine to make a drink she'd like. 
spat out a drawing of a drink which he was able to drink and loved. Aw, isn't that cute? Chat just going by, bing, bing, bing. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the order anything coffee machine. Me doing a little bit of trolling as I type in antimatter into the coffee machine, dooming all of us. Don't ask for Joe, please. He's still recovering from last time. That motherfucker is going to be in my cup whether he likes it or not, okay? I want my cup of Joe right now. Uh. Oh, and Kane, the SCP of Edge. Yeah, he's the one with, like, the dual swords or whatever and, like, can't, like, really die, right? Am I thinking of the right one there? You know, I actually went through two bottles of water this stream. Which means my ass is definitely hydrated. Ask for a cup of anyone. It's what we call a little trolling. We do a little trolling. Dude's right to be pissed. He was the first murder victim. <laughs> Abel coming out of nowhere and be like, Hey, watch this. Or wait, no. Kane murders Abel, right? It was the other way. Yeah, no, no, no. It was the other way around. K Kane goes, Yo, Abel, check it. Dunk. <laughs> really funny, right, Abel? Abel? <laughs> or Christians still get them confused. I do not know my Bible stuff. <laughs> All I know is that Kane's the one with the funny rock. <laughs> Just give him the old bonk bonk. And then you forget that rocks hurt people. Alright. <sighs> Alright. I, I am getting hungry, to be honest. So, I think we're probably going to go ahead and wrap up stream here. We got a nice four and a half hours in. Uh, for anybody who wants to watch the VOD, I'll make sure to pop in uh, tonight and drop all of the proper chapter markers so that way if people want to just listen to the actual story sections they should be able to unfortunate that we only got through four uh out of the five chapters i'd hoped for but you know it is what it is we take what we get and we don't complain except when we do in those cases it is what you know i just said it is what it is all right i'm fucking repeating oh damn just got here good fic though yep well, like I just said, I'll be uh, popping the uh, chapter titles um, and everything into the VOD. So if you want to go back and listen to it silent, you can feel more than free. Of course, you know, hopefully that's on the YouTube side because I can't do that for Twitch. Twitch uh, fucking hates it when you try to do anything that isn't live and they want to break your knees for it. Really is weird of them. Biblically accurate. Biblically, Cain killed Abel and became a vampire. Wait, I didn't know about the vampire part. What the fuck? <laughs> Hold up. My chat is horny chapter. When? Uh, yeah, no, that one's uh, obviously... Look, <laughs> sometimes I... like. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When it comes to adding the chapter titles, I like... Uh, what, what was it? When it comes to the chapter titles, I like the, uh, the freedom to sometimes name stuff. Because I, I did it for like all of the uh, Wani and uh, Snoot game stuff where I just came up with titles from. And sometimes I, I like to have, I like to have a little bit of fun. Like when we did the uh, fucking hour long tangent last time we did the reading stream. I think I titled it My Streamer Won't Shut Up. So uh, you best believe uh, there's going to be something mentioning about the horny. Uh, that's for damn sure. Child me. I never joined a book club. Adult. Here's a reading of basically a book. <laughs> Enjoy. We also take moments to talk about fucking, uh, what, uh, fucking monsters and, uh, recommendations for, uh, not safe for work games. <laughs> we had good conversations about naughty stuff, stories and stuff. We had a good time. We got four in, but Anon got the segs and a big paycheck. Oh, a wing hug worth it. There was some pretty... Baller events with weren't there. What do you mean slur? I pronounced quite clearly. <laughs> Your Honor, <laughs> how can it be a hate crime? Yeah, I read the title. Somebody has to. Somebody has to appreciate the fucking <laughs> the work I put into this damn stuff. Next reading stream should be the Greek Bible. How long is the Bible? How long is the Greek Bible? 
Let's see here. How long is the Greek Bible? How many pages in the Greek Bible? Okay. 960. All right. How many words in the Greek Bible? Bible? No, Bible. Uh, all right. How many words are in the Greek New Testament? It's not very often that someone asks about the number of words of the Greek New Testament. The number of words depends upon the compiled apparatus used to translate the Bible. Okay, ballpark it for me. <laughs> what, what the fuck? Why is it so hard to find an answer? 138,150. Okay, so under 140 grand, which means if we take a look real quick, let me, let me pop F11, go back a page. Oh fuck. Hold on a minute. I'm gonna have to go back a couple pages, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, snoot game. Here we go. We, we could have done this the whole time. It would have been way smarter. So that means, um, nothing to something is longer than the Bible. Um, bonds is longer than the Bible. Uh, bad apples longer than the Bible. None in the chambers longer than the guys. We could definitely do the Bible. <laughs> we could definitely jump into the Bible verse if we really wanted to. <laughs> Look, we are based HMOF enjoyers here. Just a reaction to more. She reads the entire Bible. <laughs> oh my God. That is a thing in it. King's cursed to walk the earth forever. He's got a mark called the mark of Cain that makes him immortal and marks him as the first murderer. From what I recall. Okay, yeah, that kind of sounds like a vampire, huh? The Bible. Book Club Sundays. That's the thing, Jeremy. I, 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 I might actually make this maybe like a two thing a week. Um, Like one a week is fine, but there's kind of like, like we kind of see here. It takes a while to get through some of this stuff. So it might be good to have like two of these, potentially. Based in Eastern Orthodox pill. Byzantium pilled even. Yeah, there's one passage that is just one sentence in Greek, but has to be broken up into several sentences in English. I love translation. Holy shit, I didn't realize none in the chamber is that long. I didn't actually look at the word count. Yeah, that uh, that one uh, that one kind of that one kind of long. <laughs> that one that one really fucking long. Doing Bible study e three fang maxing. We've got, we've got a, we've got a, we've got our holy relic here as we uh, research the Bible. Sorry, but why would I listen to you read Bible when I can listen to Joshua Graham read it? Dude, you're so fucking real for that. Joshua Graham's voice is so good. Holy shit. They didn't have to pop off that hard with this character. King's James version is about 800k. Look, what I, 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 all right, I'm not going to say it's definitive or anything. I just looked up a thing and it said 139,000. So I'm going with 139,000 for the Bible. It's still ongoing. Yeah. No, I, I wonder what it's going to end off on. That'll be kind of crazy. When was it last updated? 22nd of March. A couple days ago. Okay. Bible reading with Fang and Olivia, but they go off track after every sentence. We need to we need to find a VA for Olivia. I mean, they got one going on for fucking Encore, right? We just need to work it. Sort by word count. We'll take a look at that real quick. Uh, word count. What is the longest one? Good. Okay. All right. So it's just okay. It's an archive. So other than the fucking archives, none in the chamber is the second biggest. More she reads the Bibles 83 hours long. That does not surprise me. Fang, it's like fate wants us to be together and on. Multiversal consistent Amber. Schmeier. By the end of stream, we will retake Constantinople. Okay, uh, I need to do some research real quick. How long does it take to retake Constantinople? 
Would it be possible to retake Constantinople? Sure, I'll meet you in front of the land walls. I'll be the guy with the hockey stick. Okay, guys, we need to meet up with the guy with the hockey stick. I think we can I think we might be able to make it work. Okay, but E1 has Amber How. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> don't don't think about it too hard. We 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 don't want to spend too much thought. No nobis domine. Renaming Constantinople to Con Anon Fangtonople. Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, when we own it, we can do whatever the fuck we want, right? <laughs> So my comment earlier about reading down in the chamber before it finishes might not actually be a joke. It's possible. E1 Amber is through Fang's aunt Tusk. I just don't know what to say about that one. <laughs> but one animatic with Inko and Olivia using Parks and Rec audio stuck in my head. Those are the canon voices for me, lol. That animatic was really fucking good. <laughs> oh, boy. Skin Row Romance. Got 266 on that. What else we got? Bonds, Bad Apple, Broken Heart of Gold. Gay Penises. Gay. gay Guns of the Patriot. Huh? <laughs> what? Started up some family, some of them we get in. The kids mostly went back into it, except for Nazar since he has. He was all grown up too. What? <laughs> Why do some people name the things they name? <laughs> Not two of Knaf, Anti Fang, or Trang. <laughs> Side note, one in the chamber has some amazing references. Great! <laughs> I love references! I love being able to miss out on things because I'm a fucking dumbass. <laughs> How to unread. Sorry, that one stuck with you now. You can't you can't throw that in the trash. There's some interesting sounding fix about Amber. I like the art that draws her as a freshman in the game style. What? There's GSWAP. Behold, Adam. It's new to the Fang Triads. No, this isn't a NTR Coomer fantasy. X doubt. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. The fact you need to say that, I'm gonna. I'm gonna call you out here, brother. Probably, probably is. Anon slash Nick. Okay. See, now I'm just curious, like. Shadows of Hope, okay. Ending one. Post ending one. Okay. Snoot game Trish route. Hey. All you trigger lovers. Here's your, here's your fic. This one's made just for you. Because of regret, kind of blue, broken wings. I want to kiss that snoot. Uh, okay, so this one's this one's uh, Anon and Olivia. All right, all right, all right. Very cool, very cool. The uh, the writers be cooking. <laughs> Profligates everywhere. Now this is a fourteen fifty three classic. Just in case some aren't aware, Amber is found a name for Amber and Fang or er, Amber, for Anon and Fang's daughter. Mimi knew that one. I think it's from GVH, I think. Yeah, I think that's why it was uh, tagged as Snoot and GVH. Animal didn't know Fang was the furry in the relationship. It's the canon name. Well, there you go. Amber's the canon name. It's not Fang, believe it or not. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually getting really fucking hungry. So, fellas, this has been a great time, as always. Cut me some slack. The keyboard hates me. I mean, I can't type sometimes as well, so, you know, it's all good. I think we all can relate. But, uh, yeah, fun time as always. Got a good bit into our story. Had some good chats here. 
all around. I think I think I think we did pretty good. I think we did pretty good. Uh, in terms of when next stream will be, shooting for Wednesday tomorrow as always. I take the Tuesdays off, so we won't be then. Won't be streaming then. When Wednesday rolls around, uh, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll spend some time looking at um, some more Snoot game mods. Figure out what's going on there. Maybe I'll take a look at the Wani mods, and we'll just do like a mod stream. Or I've got like a list of games to check out, so maybe we'll do something like that as well. But uh, I'll figure that out between now and then. So, let's see. There's one dude from the rival band that doesn't talk at all. Points at Fang. Haha, <laughs> skinny lover. Yo3 made it so GVH and Snoot are identical tags last I checked. Fang doesn't have fur, so she is. Just look at your Fang in the corner and the hunger will vanish. Fang, do you got any dino nuggies for the both of us? I could use some dino nuggies right now. Dino nuggy! Alright. We won. Looking <clears throat> forward to the next, so like the idea of two read streams a week. I'll play around with it and figure out when, if we were going to do two read streams, when we would do them. So, keep an eye out for that. Community posts will always kind of give you an idea if something's happening. If I'm not streaming or if I got something planned, you can see it there. But yeah, anybody who's in chat, be you lurking or otherwise, hope you had a good time. Hope you have a good rest of your day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you. And I'll catch you, hopefully, on Wednesday around about the same time as we usually like to stream. Until then, uh, uh, praise Tarot GF. Can I get the Dino Nuggie again? I'm going to have to make my own. God damn it. <laughs>